And we're live. Hey. Hello, everyone. Tonight Hello. we're back at it again. Getting nasty with some nasties. It's time to date monsters. It's time to hunt monsters and date monsters. <laughs> we are also hunting them. That's new for me. Well, yeah. That's kind of that's kind of the, the, the that's kind of a part of um, any romantic life, isn't it? Hunting down your partner. Yeah. Oh, I see. And now we will see if I have learned anything from real life and can actually date a monster now. <laughs> I didn't start playing these games until I started dating Ronnie, so... Oh. Yeah, and I started out bad at them, so... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 
maybe now you're a master at these. I need to meanwhile check what my favorite hobby is. Cool stuff. I didn't show you the picture of me and Ronnie. I don't think. What is this? No, I, I don't know. Uh, it's that kind of plant. Ooh. It's like a cacti. Cacto? Is cactus the, the English word? Yes, cactus. Okay, good. Galaxy, what's your favorite hobby? <laughs> Very anime workout. Yeah, that, I think that, that can, yeah, you can also um, pick it. I guess efficient farming. Efficient. <laughs> That's so German of you. Yes. It's my turn. Yeah. Oh, I do. I do love saving the world, I but I don't want to get. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to get pigeonholed with. I guess I'm just. I'm just. I guess I'm gonna go for Joy again. Ah. Uh, I have to. Go, I have to go for Dahlia. I ride, of course. Who wants to do Dahlia this time? Kosti? Kosti is a perfect Dahlia. Oh. Oh man, I love anime workouts. It's so much easier to get a full workout in when it's a dramatic training montage. I like taking my time weightlifting as much as the next guy, but sometimes it's easier to just slip into a three minute musical interlude where I do bicep curls and go, go to J-pop. Maybe we can do some training montage together while we're at camp. They're supposedly really good for bonding too. I'm gonna be Aravi. Okay. Uh, I could also be Hex. I think that'll be fun, like, uh, yeah, contrast. Cool, right? <laughs> Wait, what voice did I do for them on Friday? Uh... Oh, that's awesome, Kalasti! Efficient farming is one of my favorite hobbies too! As a full-time warrior and evil monster slayer, I don't have the time to farm inefficiently. Any time wasted, it's time the enemy spends looting my gold and laughing in my face. Hmm. Me? I'll farm inefficiently all day long. Who needs farm where we can get bagels for five bucks at Walmart anyway? Don't mind, Hex. They don't understand people like us, Karlasti. At least I'll have you to talk to when we get to camp. Then now, now I have to play Joy. Yeah, do your do your best anime. Uh, oh, best are you dabbling in world saving tethers? Nice. I've pretty much made it my full time job. Hot. If, if you ever <laughs> wanted to take the, your heroism beyond the hobby, you should call me. I could give you some great pointers on how to stop an apocalypse in its tracks and still have time for a social life. Maybe we could hang out a bit this summer, in between saving countless lives. What do you say? Hell yeah! <laughs> we only had three weeks left to woo our crushes and conquer their hearts. By the way, um, for our own segment, I suggest we all, do, we all do our own narration. Okay, but as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Okay. 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 Let's go. I am... I am everything but fun. Hmm. You're especially creative. Yes. But I can remember, if you hold down tab, you can just see where everything is. Yeah. But I am going for... Someone very bold, I think. Uh... No, in these kind of games, you just want all of your stats to be balanced. You don't really want any particular stat. Really? Oh, then, then yeah. I need creativity or smarts. Yeah. I need fun then. I thought that in the first one you really want to min max, basically. In the first one you also want to be balanced, but mostly you just want everything to be extremely high because that um, increases your likelihood of, uh, of clearing challenges, and challenges is kind of what makes your progress with uh, certain characters go up. True. I decided to bring a metal detector to the lake that day. You scour the beach for buried treasure. You find a keychain, a tin box of stale cookies, which you eat anyway, a glowing <laughs> chalice that the Knights of Templar come to confiscate for some reason. But best of all, you manage to find some genuine silver plated plus two fun. Score! You join a game of volleyball with your three most violent friends, Dahlia, Damien and Aravi. 
maybe one of them will accidentally injure you with a volleyball and you'll get to act out a real life hurt slash comfort fanfic. But alas, the game never gets that far. During Dahlia's first surf, she hits the ball with a tad too much ferocity and it goes sailing off into the trees at the lake's edge. <sighs> Dahlia, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, you can be. <laughs> Sorry. Haha, <laughs> I win. The ball has been defeated. <sighs> That's not how it works. If you really want to defeat the ball, you've got to stab it. I'd show you, but just hit it all the way to the friggin' woods. Wait, I didn't know there was stabbing in volleyball. Let's go find that ball. On second thought, maybe playing volleyball with these people wouldn't have been the best idea. You follow them into the trees anyway because, well, you horny. <laughs> Guys, over here, I found a dead body. Also the volleyball. The three of you follow Dahlia's voice and find her standing over the body of a pirate. He's got it all. A peg leg, a bandana, and a fatal volleyball wound to the face. Lame! Oh man, the volleyball's so totally ruined. Way to go, Dahlia! Aww, oh, so when you murder people with sporting equipment, it's cool. But when I do it, we are suddenly concerned about the sporting equipment. Huh? Yo, has anybody else noticed the treasure chest? Free XP! Treasure, you say? We must loot it! Yes, we must open it at once. Finally, I will have the funds I need to conquer the 8th circle of hell. Not if I spend it all on tomahawks and fireworks. <laughs> <clears throat> need before greed is the rule, guys. And I need treasure. Oh god, I need it so bad. <laughs> Move on! Damn, girl, no, no wonder you ended up with a cursed necklace. <laughs> all three of your friends leap on the chest at once, biting, scratching, and hacking at it for all their word. It's no use. We'll never get treasure at this rate. If only one of us were some kind of brilliant tactician adept at thinking of unorthodox solutions. You're probably the closest thing to a tactician in the group. You throw out a suggestion. Um, what do you got, Antir? Uh, give the chest therapy to help it open up to you. Ah, come on! <laughs> you set the chest up on a comfortable couch, put on some horn-rimmed spectacles and get out a notepad. After clearing your throat several times and taking some thoughtful drags on a meerschaum pipe, you ask the chest to tell you about its father. <gasps> Uh, excuse me? <sighs> it's father? Singular? Some people have more than one father, you know? Nobody's gonna trust a therapist who's making offensive assumptions right out of the gate. I mean, shit, Snipty. Are you even a real therapist? Unbelievable! Not even a little bit. A real therapist would have made a chest fight a bear dress as a manifestation of his negative qualities. I should know. I've been to therapy. <sighs> Good lord, girl. You need me more than I thought. <laughs> I'm mad too. Because Sleep D is over here making a mockery of the therapeutic profession? No, because Sleep D has been constantly flipping off this entire time. <gasps> fuck off! Oh yeah, what the fuck, Sleep D? <laughs> you thought it would help establish you as a cool, edgy therapist to use could relate to. Ugh, you're the real curse here. Wow. I think we're all gonna need therapy after dealing with this jerk. <laughs> I'll go find some bears. You don't know what you're more afraid of. Those bears or the looks on Damien and Dahlia's faces. You flee before you're forced to find out, leaving behind minus two fun and minus one charm. Where to go now? Ah! Uh, okay, so wrong. smart or creativity. Damn, you're really charming. Yes, I am. Um, yeah, I think I want to go for smarts. Smarts is... The woods. Oh, you, wait, Cisco I mean, also would have need the smarts. That's fine, you play for you, eh? <laughs> okay. You do. Are you the, the, the narrator? Ah, oh, no, oh, no, I'm the narrator, right? Yeah. Uh, you hike deep into the woods and find a mysterious journal with number three on it half buried in the dirt. Inside is tons of information on local monsters and how to defeat them. It covers gnomes, psychics, 
Time yes. Travelers, Illuminati Shaped Demons. <sighs> what a boring journal. Oh, Where's the drama? It's, it's Gravity Falls reference. Where's the inner thoughts and insecurities about school crushes? Whoever wrote this journal knew nothing about how journals work. You gain no fun from this, but you surely get too smart. Boring. <laughs> Afterward, you're very busy making a friendship bracelet, but spooky. When you see Aravi power walking through your location with a look of fierce determination in her eyes. Have you seen any loot around here? I saw the dragon of Danger Mountain, found the incredibly rare ruby that somehow grows inside a tree, but only during the eclipse, and only if you're leveled up. I tripped the jackalope and got the got the mouse glasses back so I could trade in the seed for the for the bead and put it on the altar under the well that after I traded using the turtle. What the fuck? And I cleaned the Aegean stables and picked up Wizard's... Wizard's Fonts Dry... Wizard's Fonts Dry Cleaning. What's next? Huh. Sounds like Aravi is having quite the day. You ask her why she's doing all of these random tasks. Come on, Aravi. For the experience. <laughs> oh, don't get me started. She's doing side quests, helping everyone fight their enemies to find her items, but she can't take five minutes to find me a pizza for my side quest? <laughs> I already told you ordering a pizza isn't a quest with a high enough XP reward. We'll do that after after I do one last real side quest for the day. Let's adventure oh, No, I have to choose it. Want to come and help out, Karlasti? Two heads are better than one. <sighs> hey, I thought I was your second hair. I'm even keeping track of everything like you asked. Unbelievable! Oh great. Let's see what I what I have left to. Robert the Rubber should date Thomas Raccoon Landlord? Hex! It's just shipping charts between all my side quest prospects. Uh, What's your point? Uh, my point is a list of who should fight and who should fuck. <laughs> and a photo <laughs> of love triangles. That's nothing for me in terms of figuring out my next move. Did somebody say pizza? Oh, uh, all those side quests do nothing for me in terms of finding me a pizza. So I guess we're even. Look. If I have to power through all these side quests, I might as well add some drama through my shipping flow, flow charts. So it plays like some, some sort of telenovela, telenovela in my mind. <laughs> Luckily for Aravi, evaluating bonkers courses of action based on what stats they'll give you is particularly the only thing you do. Oh, practically, sorry. Looking at Hex notes, it's immediately clear which side quest will unlock the ultimate goal. Making a Ravi smile. Oh, no. Help the local mayor to open a TikTok account so he can bond with his teenage son. Collect 10 turnips for the town's guard who is totally not using them to pleasure himself. <laughs> oh, well, I, I take the turnips. Of course. This will be fun. That's not so fun. Oh, God. Oh, oh I no. mean, the scandal of it, of, of it all is real. Plus, it's important to, not to king shame. Hmm. No, that's true. But also doesn't mean you need to become participant in, a, in that person's kink. What if he gets off of the delivery of the turnip, turnips itself? Uh. But on the other hand, I do need the XP and loot. And with, this, and with this gig economy, individual quests is the most accessible way to get them. Sure, adventuring for a major corporation might come with health insurance and job stability, but there are a lot of pitfalls there as well. Sometimes actual pits. Plus, I like being my own boss and murdering on my own schedule. So are we getting the jerk off turnips or not? Nah? <laughs> the answer is not nah, because next thing you know, you're fighting goblins and trading instruments to acquire a large mass of turnips, which you then deliver to the guard. <laughs> all right, here you turnips that I'm hoping against all those are first too. Reward, please. Oh yeah, says the guard. I don't have it on me, but come back tomorrow and I'll give you the loot. Wow. That's, that's Aravi cool. looks displeased, but you head back to the inn where a gruff but friendly barkeep regale, regales you with tales of his past until you turn in, f in for the night. Adventure awaits! Well, I'm not expected, but at least we got to hear about the barkeeper's life as an adventurer before I took an arrow to the name. <laughs> Let's get my loot. <laughs> You return to the guard who smilingly hands you a large burlap sack. Here's your reward. Arabi opens it. Uh, wait, this is just the turn of the report yesterday. 
Wow. No, says the guard, these are used turnips. <laughs> Bowls before a Ravi can get her hands on him, which is lucky for him because boy, does she look mad. Oh. Understandable. Next time, this is... I won't have any mercy. I'm mad. And not just for that misleading fetishy guard, but at you, Karlasti, for suggesting this horrible, mentally scary quest for the first place. I'm freaking sorry. <laughs> We'd be happy to take a literal tongue lashing from a Ravi, but the metaphorical one that ensues is so sketching that you lose two fun and one smart. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, this game is very punishing. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> While wandering the haunted manor, you're ambushed by a group of evil spirits. You put up a good fight, but there's just too many of them, and they run away with your immortal soul. <gasps> Luckily, you always knew this day would come, and you replaced your immortal soul with a beady baby years ago. <laughs> good foresight on your part, you gain two boldness. You faintly hear what sounds like a haunted classical music and murmured whispering. Part of the course at the haunted manor, but you hear a familiar anime scream. Gah! You're all idiots! We can't open our concert with the Forgotten Tomb song. They're not cool at all. That's why they've been forgotten. It looks like your friends are in a room surrounded by Victorian ghosts having a party. And your friends look pretty freaked. Are they scared of ghosts? Ugh. What? No, not at all. We have literal classmates who are ghost tatters. Welcome to you the may remember that Damien, Dahlia and I are all in a scream band called Fantagram. It's pretty fun. Shrieking semi-coherently into a microphone is actually a good way for me to relieve stress. <gasps> Problem is, these Victorian ghosts hired us for their annual temporary return from Purgatory Party. What it sounds fun. Here in the Haunted Manor and we can't decide what to open with. <gasps> This is going to make or break the entire concert! The opening number is pretty much the only song anyone will be sober enough to listen to! You can't help but inquire about the logic of spirits from the 1800s hiring a screamer band for their concert. Hmm. Well, I don't think that they always liked Screamo, but being condemned to an eternity of purgatorial torture tends to affect your uh, aesthetic tastes. What a noob! Yeah, have some fucking compassion! Nope. Uh... Anyway, back to business. I agree with Damien. No Forgotten Tomb cover. The best Screamo cover is obviously Dangerous Woman by Ariana Grande. <laughs> Dahlia, just because you scream the lyrics to Ariana Grande songs doesn't make them scream. Fucking Agreed. Metal. Let's do Your Makeup is Terrible by Alaska Thunderfuck. At least six of the words in that song are like my entire vocabulary. Enough of this. Neither of you know what you're talking about. I'm the lead singer, damn it. I get to decide what songs we do. <sighs> ah, fuck this conversation. I'm setting the, the amp on fire. Damien, no, it's a rental. You better solve this argument before the ghosts get sick of your shit and start doing Victorian ghost things, like throwing vases and huffing opium. <laughs> What song should your friends you? open the concert with? You know, a <laughs> big opium in a den. The best song to open anything is an anime opening, and the best <gasps> anime opening is without a doubt a Cruel Angel's thesis from Evangelion. Nice. Victorian's, Victorian ghosts are called that because they love Victoria Adams, aka Posh Spice. <laughs> you should do a screamer cover of Wannabe. If you yeah. wanna be my lover. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, one of them smarts, one of them smarts, I think. <laughs> Leave this to uh, the are you high? Why the fuck would we sing Spice Girls at a Screamo concert? We might as well have gone with Ariana Grande. Hmm. I'm not super convinced either, but I admit that I don't have any better ideas. Just open the concert, Damien, it's worth a shot. <laughs> Fine! Okay, everyone, listen the fuck up! We're Fentagram, we're gonna be singing some Spice Girls song. How do you like that shit? Better, it's gone. Huh? The ghosts all cheer. Wow, who knew this plan would actually work? We understand your Victorian and therefore love Victorian. 
Victoria Adams, so let's get ready to rock. <laughs> we like Victoria, one of the ghosts says. That's very presumptuous. We're much bigger fans of Mel B. <laughs> yeah, says another. She's scary spies and we're scary ghosts. Our representation in media is very important to us. Hang on! Another ghost yet cries. Mel B is hardly the best male in Spice Girls. Mel C, sporty spies, is clearly superior. She promotes a heavy lifestyle, which is something we could all have learned from. Maybe if you'd followed her example, Bartholomew, you'd still be alive. You're wrong, because Mel B is the best. Mel C is obviously better. This is why nobody fucking likes you, Theodosia. <laughs> I like baby spice. One ghost pipes up. Another ghost strikes him across the head with a wine bottle. <laughs> a huge bar fight ensues. Oh shit, this is getting out of hand. We should probably leave. <laughs> no, one of them has been by my arm. Help! Oh god, it's 1890 all over again! A ghost wails. This Spice Ghost related massacre is clearly what killed everyone here 200 years ago. It's never, it's a never ending curse. No it was your stupid ass beat, Tatters. I hope you like being distraction bait. <sighs> hey everybody, this stupid motherfucker like ginger spice. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> oh no, I'm cooked. I'm cooked. Yeah. <laughs> Damien throws you into the middle of the fight, and he, Dahlia, and Joy run like hell. You barely make it out of, out of the ghostly Spice Pro life, and you lose two bonus and a fun. Wow, we're so good at dating already. Yeah. Ooh. Everybody, Everybody choose. choose something good. What's... Um... Barbecue. Kebab. Cool shit, I mean, go for food. Okay. We got barbecue, kebab, and... I was gonna say custard, but I'm just going to say doing your taxes. Wow! <laughs> wow, no. so German. Wow. Player already decided based on the likelihood that society would survive. He said good thing was completely wiped from existence. Wow! I think I win. Oh, I think I win. win. Yeah, wow, that, win. that's so unfair. You, you, the two of you can can. can yeah. Decide. What 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 can we lose hard as barbecue of kebab? I think kebab we can lose okay. more than the yeah. barbecue. I'm so sorry, Ghosty. <laughs> no! Oh! Oh! I was. Oh, sick dang of it! <laughs> No, it's fine. It was Let's basically go. tight. Okay. You Sorry. need more smarts. I, I'm just, I'm just vibing this, this, this game. <laughs> that how you happen to make the same monster scouts class as, as Mamimi, the Oni girl. You didn't get good sleep last night, so you ask her if she has any of that weird energy drink she let you have once during high school. She doesn't, but she does have a very strange smelling coffee that could help. Where does this girl even find these weird ass drinks? At Emuji, let me tell you. <laughs> the coffee is delicious, but it comes with side effects. You get an acquired fear of caterpillars, and you grow too creativity in your hair. You meet up with Joy to help her practice her dramatic looks, then suddenly your nose detects the unmistakable scent of. <gasps> Dmitri! <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> Darkness. <like. laughs> That's me. Yeah. Indeed, my little sometimes so and definitely not potential love interest. No, no, that's not what you smell at all. It's been much more like coach in a bear costume. <laughs> cool, Steve? Bear attack! Bear attack! I'm a bear and I'm attacking. Breeding scouts! <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not actually a bear. I'm just your good old high school coach who cares a lot about bear safety. I know you're not actually a bear, coach. Can't you see I'm busy having a climactic and steamy showdown with my sometimes foe and definitely not secret crush. Yes, be gone, <laughs> foolish word tiger. What do we care for bear safety when the fate of the world hangs in the belly? What do we care for bear safety? What do we care for bear safety? Oh, kids, you need this bear safety drill more than I thought. Beware the 100% of fatal bear attacks result in the death of one or more people. <laughs> That's statistically statological. Fact. 
100% of bear attacks happen when at least one bear is present. Where did you get these bear facts? Fact. Bears do not pee during hibernation. Hmm. That's actually a pretty interesting fact. But there aren't any real bears here. And even if there were, Dimitri is far more dangerous than a bear. <laughs> Oh really? And explain why I, your coach, who cares deeply about your well-being, am dressed in a bear costume and not Dimitri costume. <laughs> Trust clearly not going to beat coach with logic, and she's not going to beat Dimitri at all if you don't help. But how can you pr prove to coach that Dimitri is the bigger priority? Is this coach in creating a taxonomy that properly assesses the dangerousness of every single animal, so I can truly see that vampire lord greater bears? Or greater than bears. Convince Coach that Dimitri is actually a bear. So one smart, one creativity, I think. Uh, uh, fuck. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the taxonomy. Ah, oh, not so smart. You calmly ask Coach which is more dangerous a word tiger in a bear costume or a bear in a bear costume? Oh my god, I hadn't even considered the fact that bears could wear bear costumes, or how dangerous they would be if they did. <laughs> Maybe I haven't done enough thinking about the relative dangerousness of various creatures. You couldn't agree more. You propose a taxonomy that classifies animals based on the dangerousness of their teeth, claws, and supernatural abilities. Hmm. But what about their in intellects? Isn't an octopus with a gun more dangerous than a sloth with a crossbow? You explain that in the case of the octopus and the sloth, what really matters is the political affiliation. <laughs> Them right of course! Again. <laughs> Most octopi are free market libertarians, whereas sloths tend to gravitate towards radical eco-terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> but doesn't categorizing animals by political affiliation risk ignoring the ideological variation that exists in any population? I mean, not all G's are anarchist, are they? That, you explain, is why it's so important that you create a poli political questionnaire that can be administered to animals in order to determine whether they're dangerous. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I still think it's safer to categorize animals by their dexterity, number of arms, and which house they would belong to if they went to... Yes. <laughs> what you do keep with them? It's hard to, to concentrate on your anger than will they won't they dynamic when you're shouting about octopi and crossbars. Last Dimitri, if he is if he is now or has ever been a member of the Octopus Party. Do you like to bake cupcakes? Do you secretly imagine that you are better than all your friends? How many arms do you have? This cannot be for uh, real. That's it. If you wanted to watch Dimitri answer random questions about his personal preferences, I'd like to stick around for the after the episode interview. Everyone, get out of here. You too, Dimitri. The moment's passed. I'm not feeling angsty or emotionally vulnerable at all. But Joy, I finally realized that- Traguna No, incendium buttholes. <laughs> Youch, you had no idea Jan had a spell specifically for setting anyone's buttholes on fire! You didn't even come to an ag agreement with Coach about which animals are dangerous. You lose too fun and are smart. So bad all in all. Yeah, we're not going great. Okay, um, what do you want? Fun? I want a sippy sip from a bottle bot. Fun for Carlisle. Before you go to the lake, you decide to make the most fun inflatable <laughs> toy to float on, on that you possibly can. So you can buy many of your favorite fun things. Ice cream, tabletop games, watching your enemies fail, ducks. The resulting am amalgamation is certainly interesting, even if it doesn't exactly float on water. You decide to name your toy Dr. Frankenfun, or maybe you should name it Dr. Frankenfun's monster. Just beholding the horror you've created gives you plus two fun. 
you already knew Aravi was loaded with bravery, determination and... Schatzpa? Schatzpa. Schatzpa. But as she roots through her bag, it's clear she's loaded with some pretty sick items as well. Unbelievable! Why am I battle addicts plus one through 200 all out of order? <laughs> I got ball while you were sleeping and arranged them by color. Ravi rolls her eyes and drops all the battle axes on the ground to be sorted later. Yeah. Here's that Alexandria's cursed emerald item I found in that one dungeon. And may I just say, I'm very cool about not being the only curse in your life. Anton? Mrs. Mishra, how dare you litter on the hallowed grounds of Camp Spooky? Oh. I'm not littering, Camp Director Miss Weaving. I was just looking for... through my bag for... You're telling me that all these items were in that one small bag? L likely story. And what is this bottle of booze? That's not... that's my therapist. Then you need a second therapist to help you deal with the fact that you keep your first therapist trapped in a bottle. If that were true, which it's obviously not, and I can prove it, let's see exactly what kind of spirits are in here. If it's Mr. Sky's toilet wine again, I swear. Hey, try to listen to your inner self. We have a raisin interesting. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, you go ahead. Weaving raises an interesting point about keeping me in a bottle, Aravi. Hmm. Do you think you feel the need to keep people physically tied to you because of your brother Salius' disappearance? So you didn't sneak booze in you, snuck a pet into camp. That's even worse. I'm confiscating it immediately. I don't want to talk face. about my feelings. <laughs> she's not a pet. She's my therapist, and I'll prove it. And I'll prove it by showing how calm and level-headed therapy has made me. Yeah. I've been working so hard at therapy, and I'm getting so good at therapy. <laughs> I appreciate the enthusiasm, but therapy isn't something you get good at. Slaying therapy, and I'm going to prove it by... But lastly, how am I going to prove how good I am at therapy so Miss Weaving gives Nora back? You've done dream interpretation and therapy, right? Demonstrate analyzing the shit out of a dream. This may not be spooky high, but you can still ace a test. The ultimate test. The Rorschach test. Oh no. Which analyzing one? a dream or the Rorschach test? Now I want to analyze the dream. Oh, oh that's true. I'm I'm always explaining my dreams to Nora, even when she asks me to stop and move on. Mm -mm. Well, Aravi, even though dreams can reveal what's on your subconscious mind, it's still important to confront the realities of day-to-day -day life. Yeah. But I'm going to use all the dream analysis to get you unconfiscated, so you see the therapy trap we said is finally going to be sprung. Therapy isn't a trap, Aravi. Okay, you guys, everyone, just listen to the dream Kalasti had one, and then I'm going to explain the dream she had, okay? Care for it. Go for it, Kalasti. Make it the easiest to ever to analyze dream ever, okay? Simple enough. You start to tell Aravi about the dream you had where your teeth fell out. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, the classic recurring dream, often symbolizing loss or change, summons of a sudden nature. You've made great progress. Oh, Ravi, so you have been play uh, paying attention. Of course I have. I told you I'm going to grind my way through therapy and finish it with 100% completion and all humans are locked. That's so auntie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I, 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 I feel oh, it. No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. Continue, Carlos. You describe how the moment the teeth fell out of your mouth, they took a pitchfork, crawled back into your mouth, and used the pitchforks to prop your mouth open. So easy. <laughs> Tiny men made out of apples with razor blades inside marched into your mouth and down your throat, rendering you unable to scream. Meanwhile, a snake made of pillows tried to smother you. Your toes dropped off and began to criticize you. 
Your organs melted from the inside and poured out of your mouth, which was still held open by the teeth with the pitchforks. Your history teacher was there. You da got a D minus. Well, Miss Mishra, I'm going to give you back your therapist now. On the condition that you let Karlaxti have a few sessions of her own. Yeah. You think Arabi is going to be grateful to you, but instead she immediately books a session with Nora to cope with how disturbing your dream was. You thought everybody had dreams like this. <laughs> you lose two charm and one fun. Of course everybody has dreams like this. <laughs> of course. Okay, I can't get fun. I can't get more charm. Yeah. That day at the camp, though, you do all you all do thumb wars. That means the campers are waging war against thumb warriors, the supernaturally buffed thumb monsters from Camp Thumb. It's surprisingly terrifying. You were all you all were sure to lose, but thanks to your quick thinking, you hatched a plan to fight thumb warriors with their greatest weakness: predators without opposable thumbs. Some may say that your team chasing a pack of rabbit mountain lions on the coppers is cheating, but you prefer the term strategic. You gain two charm. Later, you're playing Mega Dodgeball against Camp Rival Camp. You take a ball to the stomach pretty early in the game. You can feel your insides bleeding. But who cares? It's all come down to an epic level showdown on the two most muscular, muscular players on each team. Dahlia versus Morty the Minotaur! Fuck yes! A sexy challenger <laughs> Listen, babe! You're hot, but you should surrender now! You can't defeat me! I gave myself a Thai massage right before this game, so I'm more limber than ever! This is a takeover! <laughs> Bring it on, Minotaur! I've defeated both men and bulls in battle, but never have I defeated a half bull, half man! I guess that makes me your first! Hashtag slay! Yes, Dahlia, you are absolutely saving this dodgeball vibe. Make that ball work for it, you murderous Cerulean goddess. Thanks, Milo. I completely agree with you. I am a goddess. You're a good friend for noticing. It's impossible not to notice. Now fuck the sports game right up. Dahlia is here! My motherfucking dodgeball goddess! Yeet! <laughs> Dahlia is completely hyped by Milo's cheering. She throws the ball super hard. It just barely misses Morty and crashes through the dome's roof, landing in the woods. Oops. You all decide to go look for the dodgeball, and Morty comes along. Instead, he refuses to leave a tense, sweaty duel unresolved. Okay. Mm we're looking for the ball. What do we know about the ball? I guess we know it's ball shaped and round. And hey, that meh old lady has it. Cool, sir. <laughs> I have your ball right here, you filthy naughty children. Since it fell into the forest, and since I consider the entire forest to be my yard, the ball is mine now. Watch out, you guys! That old lady is the Baba Yaga. She's a witch that lives out here in the woods. I'm an official coven witch, so I know a fellow witch when I see one. What? She's a witch! Dahlia, go get the ball back! What if she puts a curse on me that makes me magically forget location of the clitoris? <laughs> Sorry! You need a hot second for that. <laughs> <laughs> so easy to forget. <laughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> you shall never get your ball back, you naughty children. I will use it to play with my precious kitty, Mr. Beanzo. <laughs> <laughs> This is totally unacceptable. I was streaming a dodgeball duel to my followers. They need to know how it ends, or it'll be so narratively unsatisfying. Your friends need that ball back, and you're desperate to them for their approval. It's time to make a trade. 
offers the Baba Yaga something too good to refuse. Uh, if you give us a dodgeball, we'll give you a fault memory to treasure forever, or if you give us a dodgeball, we'll give you a delicious newborn child. I think I'm gonna go for the, the child. Ah, oh, fuck! That's the fun <laughs> option, apparently. <laughs> Yes, I shall return your ball for one newborn child that I shall eat. Now don't come back until you have a child to trade me. For free. Trading the Baba Yaga Dungeons child just for a fucking for dodgeball? Free. That's surprisingly badass. Nabu wants to make a baby. God damn it. Um, as a deity of death, I'm afraid I can't endorse ending someone's life ahead of the fated moment just for a dodgeball game. It'd be terribly off-brand. You explained that you fooled the Baba Yaga by giving her a fake baby. You have paint, a blanket, and a Dexter ball in your backpack. All the supplies needed for a DIY fake ball baby. You have a fucking extra ball in your backpack, you idiot! <laughs> if Sleep D has an extra ball, why don't we need to fuck around with the Baba Yaga? Can we, use this? Can we just use this ball to finish our dodgeball duel? I'm getting real pent up. No, we can't switch balls halfway through the battle. That'd be an insult to our armorous warriors. That ball is part of this fight to the end. Hmm. True. I will have to think about the poetics of the situation. If the Baba Yaga, if the Baba Yaga currently has the match ball, sleep these balls. The let's deceive the Baba Yaga ball. Can you guys see Granted that. It does make sense, but still, I can't stand to see us waste a ball like this. I'm a chuck, okay? Balls are precious to me. I respect balls. I can't believe how sexy this stupid ball man is. Can't we just Why? give this old lady an actual newborn baby? It'll be hilarious. He's so sexy and evil. <laughs> is he <it> mean? <laughs> And he might forgot the location of something important. <laughs> yeah. You agree to disagree with Morty and start painting the extra ball. Thanks to a quick TikTok tutorial, it turns out super good. That ball looks like a baby. You did it. You look for the Baba Yaga so you can trade, but she's nowhere to be found. It's actually super annoying that her house moves around the forest at random. This is not over! We've got no choice but to postpone our dodgeball match until tomorrow. <laughs> Nothing pisses me off like an unfinished battle. Can you watch the ball, Sleep Tea? You agree to watch the ball overnight. You're scared that you're going to somehow lose the ball and disappoint your friend. So you decide to stay up all night guarding it. You accidentally develop a deep emotional bond to the ball. You gave it the name Bolly. You're very sleep deprived and it's the best thing you could think of. The next day, you need Milo, Dahlia and Morty in the woods. You trade Bolly the, to the Baba Yaga. And it breaks your heart. <laughs> you miss Bali already. You miss your sweet ball child so much that you lose two creativity and one fun. A celebrity. Mm. Celebrity. Uh, Olivia Rodrigo. Katie McGrath. Um. One moment. One moment. Mm, hang on. How obscure is this celebrity gonna be? No, you all took like you all took like popular actors. I'm gonna take take someone else. No, popular. Olivia Rodrigo is a singer. Sorry. No, she's also an actress. Really? She was in she was in Mon she was in uh, fuck what's it called High School Musical. Oh, High School Musical, the musical. <laughs> you mean right? Yeah. Okay. Probably yeah, or something like that. Um, fuck, 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 um... Yeah, that's what we do. Uh. Uh, you're very funny, you're very funny. Um, hang on, hang on. Almost got it. Okay, fuck, Johnny Depp. Play a word to decide Depp, based Johnny on how Depp. loose word it would be if that celebrity was cast as the next Batman. I think Coolsta has this one. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. And then it's choosing between Johnny Depp or Katie McGrath as the I new I think Batman. Katie McGrath would be yeah. the second yeah. biggest. 
Yeah, we... Johnny Depp is. I'm surprised they haven't done Johnny Depp yet. <laughs> Indeed, actually. Let's stir those marshmallows. So, um. Which rooms do you want to sit? Oh, I I need to sit with. Yeah, there. Also, I need to with sit. our respective people tonight. All with Mr. Mothman. Oh, poor Mr. Mothman, but I want to to sit next to the person I I shall date. So Arabi. Yeah. Okay. You walk over to find Damien screaming about something. Aravi punches him in the head until he shuts up. They both seem to be in oddly good spirit. Uh, you need to get your anger uh, under control. Gladly. Me. You're for my unofficial anger management seminar? Uh, nice. <laughs> I'm trying to teach Damien some of the techniques that my therapist helped me master when I was still doing regular sessions with her. Blame. But all these techniques are fucking stupid. Breathe in, breathe out. I'm breathing anyway. This doesn't help at all. Uh, but you're supposed to be finding your zen while you're breathing, you Calamon red piece of shit! Nice. But stabbing the shit out of somebody and pissing on their corpse is my zen! Just count to ten. We've already been over this one. <coughs> if you feel angry and want to stab someone, you should count to ten. Then you stab them, but by then you're like, way calmer about it. Ah, uh, okay. One, two, three. Uh, fuck. What comes after three? Fuck it, I'm too ang angry to think right now. I'm fucking hate Moth. I wanna step Moth right in its face. Stop! I'm trying to help you reach through common the way I did, you stupid asshole. It's so peaceful you'll regret being this moronic about it. <laughs> this has been going on for almost half an hour. If you know anyone, shut them up, I'll owe your life dead. Let's start at the beginner level of not holding a grudge. Not physically holding the movie The Grudge. Damien, don't let Aravi boss you around. You've been angry so long that by now, if there were an anger factory, you'd be the anger manager. Hmm, that's tough. Mm, I would opt for the second option. Whoa, that's crazy! Oh. Damn! Holy shit! You mean there's an anger factory? That fucking rules! <sighs> uh, I'm pretty sure Kalasti was speaking up pathetically. Shut up! Shut up, Hex! I'm CEO now! <gasps> oh my god, I... look at him! He's I... hot! <laughs> he actually has the same horns as Karlich right now. <laughs> I can't waste time with menial conversations like this. I have to lead Anger Corp to the top of the stock market. Huh? Even produce that suit. Uh... Are you hearing yourselves right now? Nothing that anyone said in the last five minutes or ever has made any <laughs> sense. <laughs> Anger Corp will design products specifically meant to enrage you, like crappy Swedish furniture that's always missing a few screws, or those ketchup packets that refuse to tear. <sighs> and I'll make the office environment infuriating too, to make sure everyone at the top of their game. The Wi-Fi will be spotty. The chairs will be squeaky, and the vending machine will always be out of Kit Kats. I can see it now, Karlaxty. When they interview us for Forbes 30 under 30, we'll tell those fuckers we excel because we immerse ourselves in our craft. Fight me, dude. And then we'll punch those fuckers in the throat for wasting my precious time. I love being in anger management. Uh -huh. I'm so much right now, you have no idea. <laughs> Okay, Dipshit, have, have, you done fake, have you done fake anger company? But how you gotta fund it? Huh? Shit, you're right. The bank probably won't let me take out the small business loan since I used the last one to buy a baby Kraken for my bathtub. Let's do this Wait, Damien I'll style. just ask Fera for the loan. She'll wanna get in on this. She loves this business shit. Come on, Carlax T, let's go make a phone call. You run up with Damien to phone Vera. She is definitely not going to invest in this stupid business plan, but for now, Damien loves your idea and, by extension, you. He even gives you a promotion for a job you never knew you had. Maybe once Anger Corp uh, gets off the ground, Damien will be the gym to your pan. Tonight will be the night of the living dead. Yes, I'll... Do I sit with my crush on the man? I'll do for the crush. 
You happen upon calculus the Rendea Dahlia flipping through a scrapbook, a laughing wreck, 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 Oh, hell yeah, this is a great picture of us, Carl. The Colosseum and the Forum were so cool to see in person. God, I love the Romans. So many training facilities, ancient armor, literal centuries of bloodlust soaking the soil. I couldn't stop fangirling. Success achieved. Who's this? Yes. I'll do yes. it, I'll do it, you I'll do, do it. it. Okay. 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 Yes, they were truly fascinating, but I must say that seeing the Olivetti headquarters in person was the highlight of my Italy experience. Being in the presence of one of the earliest computer manufacturing companies in the world was a dream come true. I hope they make my ancestor proud. Oh hey Slipty, wanna look at our scrapbook? We were just reminiscing about the trip to Italy we took last month. She shows you the scrapbook. You get the impression that it was a joint project. Some of the pages are very decorated with bone fragments and motivational glitter stickers. And others were clearly typed up and printed straight out of Microsoft Excel. We had an amazing time. I was fascinated by all the churches and even more fascinated by the beautiful, meaningless rituals organics performed there. Uh. Yeah, unfortunately I had to sit those places out. The Pope didn't really seem keen on letting someone with horns into the Vatican. Wow. But it's cool. I commandeered a gondola in Venice and we had an all-out naval battle that I totally crushed. Venice. Mm -hmm. Yes, incidentally, we are no longer allowed to enter Italy. <laughs> but there are lots of other places to visit. I'm thinking Britain for our next trip. Let's keep the ruthless war machine empire theme going. Be nice, but I'm partial to Japan. Their technological advances intrigue me so greatly. I also have an uncle who works at Nintendo as a copy machine. Flippy, <laughs> you could come too. There's always room for more on the Dahl and Carl Express. A vacation with Dahlia and Calculister? Where do you start? <gasps> Wait, friend Dahlia. I am also happy to invite Sleepy for the next trip. But what role will he fulfill? <gasps> You make an excellent point. A true master of war knows what every member amongst her ranks must be absolutely necessary. Back to basics. An apt comparison. You see, sleep, sleep day. In a previous trip, I acted as perfect trip planner, organizing all activities and color coded spreadsheets. Cappuccino! Fettuccini! Al Pacino! Mm. I was the moral booster. I was going around screaming, Look! It's the David! Look! It's the Uffizi! To maintain the hype and make sure that everyone knew what they were looking at. Hmm. Besides horny one and gamer, what role could you fulfill on a vacation with Dahlia and Calculus? You can see the backup memory, Calculus's memory could be overridden and Dahlia put herself in danger so that that memory loss is a very real possibility. Or you can analyze all of the country's weaknesses to ensure you can defeat in the Battle of Turin. I'm gonna go for the Battle of Turin. Impressive! Oh hell yeah, that's an amazing idea. You're hired. Uh... I mean, I loved our trip to Italy, but I do kinda regret not doing more research into their weakness sooner. Uh... Like the pizza and pasta, clearly inferior to the <laughs> Olive Gardens. <laughs> uh... And the wimpy parliamentary republic. What happened to Caesar? Did he die? That's not very heroic. So not to mention their surprisingly squishy skulls. I would have thought the Roman residents would have retained some of their ancestors' strength, but apparently not. <gasps> I tested this myself. Actually, my research concluded that Italian skulls are not resistant to an attack from a morning star. Weird. After that, the police showed up and totally confiscated my morning star and arrested me. Probably because they were scared I'd cover the rest of their weaknesses. What? Where was I when all this happened? In the Vatican, I think. I told you I used the time to check out some old dungeons. Oh dear. Oh I thought you did so in a terrific capacity, not because you were temporarily imprisoned in one. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
details don't matter. If only I'd known Italy's weakness profile sooner, I simply would have brought more morning stars. But I'll be more prepared next time. Thanks to you, Sleep Tea, I can't wait. Yeah, neither can you. As long as you get to be there when Dahlia is swinging her morning star, that is. Just a thought is already getting you all hot and bothered. Home is where your booty sits the comfiest. Who wants to do a German accent? Ant here? <laughs> That's the only non German. Sadler, yes, please. I am so glad you're here. I just heard the most astounding rumor. <laughs> there is gossip going around yeah. that Camp Spooky is not a summer camp at all. It is merely a simulation. Of the dating variety, in fact. Of the dating. The I'm reality confused. that we have come to accept is all, in fact, a huge farce. I can't possibly wrap my head around it. Um, uh, you saw what this fourth wall breaking shit does to your friends before. Nobody would shut up about the world being a lie enough for you to get any action. Please, Tabith, tell me. Do you think these tales are true? I can't get it out of my mind. Shit. Miss Moss is really starting to freak out. You just distract him while with the most mind boggling incredible gossip you can think of before it's too late. Ooh, you're just gossiping about yourself. Yeah. Uh, I got Pi Fight Airstrike Philosophy Lecture or Music Video. I'm gonna go with Philosophy Lecture. I got Sweet and Cabbage Aroma, uh, Sweat and Cabbage Aroma, Booty, Nipple Fungus, and Rock Hard Abs. I'm gonna go with uh, Booty. Tap in someone you'd love to have dinner with. Unfortunately, Sir Terry Pratchett is dead, but I would love to have dinner with him. Gossip! Wow, that was such an engaging story. I completely forgot what we were talking about before. Was it important? <laughs> well, I suppose it's no matter now. I feel so much more relaxed for some reason. I should tell you everyone what you said, so they can feel relaxed too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna voice the next character that shows up. <laughs> Already so tired of my shit. <laughs> no, no, I just want to give you a little break. But it, it was great. You do a great German accent, I think. Uh, not long after that, Moss has completely spread your room around camp. That is me. <laughs> yeah. I Hi. So now Tata's right. Listen to this, because you may not know her as well as you thought. According to what I heard, last year she was arrested for partaking in a legal philosophy lecture. <laughs> it was evil philosophy. <laughs> the trial was long and tedious, right up until Tadis, who was defending herself, called a surprise witness, who was none other than Sir Terry Pratchett. Ah, that was a trial to remember. But that's not even the strangest thing. In the end, the judge determined Tadis was innocent solely based on. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that, 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 that's you. Rude and base. <laughs> <laughs> Booty built. The determined Tadis was totally innocent solely based on her booty. Better keep that in mind next time you talk to Tadis. Thanks to your gossiping skills, Tata's reputation forever changed, and she gains two smarts. <laughs> it's all stored in the booty. Ooh. Ah, yeah. We have to take a gamble. Gamble. That weekend, you visit your good pal Juan. He knows a thing or two about getting wasted. Hey, I have Juan. Bue bueno, bueno. Look who's here. I was just experimenting with these drinks here. He's so cute. I was about to throw them away, but I have a feeling you've reckless enough to give them a try, right? What about this one? Protein shake. No idea if I got the recipe right. Wanna try it? Otherwise, you always have... The mystery box. So mystery box is a random drink. I can tell you what the protein shake does if you want. Do you want to know what 
Do you want to know what the shake does? Um, yes, I want to know. Um, it shuffles your stats. Ooh, I guess then I'd take the surprise one. The box, the box. Yeah, give me the box. The full moon. The mystery box. How bold of you. Hope you're happy with it. No refunds. Quite appealing, right? Do know if I drink that. But the real question is, will you, the Margarita? I also have this mystery box because at this point, who knows what you'd drink? I do have to say, I don't even know what it does, but these brains and I'm a zombie, so I'm taking it. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. I was testing your common sense. And you passed. Your price is the drink you choose. Love potion number nine. What do you say? Will you take the drink of the day? <clears throat> or would you prefer the mystery box? I don't know what in, what's in love potion number nine, actually. What happened to the first eight? Yeah, no, totally. I was testing your common sense. It's gonna be like science fiction story where it's just salt. It's just concentrated salt. <laughs> and you passed. Your price is the drink you choose. So, I get... Ah, the love potion number 9. The right way to get someone to like you more is by being yourself and finding someone with whom you can match. But the fast way is by drinking <laughs> this drink. Oh, wow. So, you want to drink a margarita, huh? To think that by drinking a brain you'll absorb its smarts is a bit simplistic. But hey, it's what actually happens. Awesome's razor at its finest. I like straws. Oh wow, I got good stuff. Nice. The full moon is a very powerful beverage. Not just you, but all of you need to take sips from it carefully. Oh, I'm so sorry guys. <laughs> you will open your souls to this beautiful full moon we have tonight. And its power will show all your stats, even if it's just a bit. Oh, so what it's good. Yeah, we all get our stats. We all get a one plus to everything. Nice. This is the part where I leave before you puke all over at me. Ciao. What a cutie. A movie. Oh, a movie. I'm Freaking gonna go with hell. Halloween Kills. Happy death day. Um, my bloody Valentine. Hi, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hi, Player Orange is decided based on the likelihood that thousands of years from now, archaeologists will use that movie to explain how society functions in the 21st century. Ooh. I think you can randomize this one. Yeah. yeah. The first answer. I just wanted to go grab a drink, actually. But... You want to take a short break? <laughs> yeah, let yeah. us take a short break. I'm gonna I'm make so myself a mukka fuck, and you can't nice. stop me from. You, you can't stop me from saying mukka fuck. All right, a, a, a very, very short break. Be right back.
We're back for some dating and some mocha fucker. Hell yeah, we're fucking. <laughs> no, we're back. Hmm. Take awesome. fun, I can take something else. I'm about to say, you also need fun. Uh, I can also take creativity. Then I'm, yeah, then I'm. That's fine because your fun is like the lowest stat from every one of us. Oh yeah, we'll yeah, try to have yeah. some fun. Get some fun. You're in the lake, so maybe it's kind of relaxing, but hella boring. What's the issue? Have you lost your ability to have some fun unless you're playing video games or partying in wild raids? Yes. Yeah. Ah, no, you see the problem now. You didn't put on sunscreen, but fun screen, which has fun protection factor of 50. <laughs> You wash the fun screen away with some water and put on some sunscreen. There you go. You prevent some sunburn and gain too fun. Fun screen is what I need at work, so I can work more focused. <laughs> Wait, you actually have fun at work? God. I mean, don't tell my manager, but I spent most time at work preparing D&D, <laughs> okay. learning languages, or uh, listening. Yeah. 
drinking Mooper Schlooper. You're minding your own business, smelling people, when Dahlia grabs you and drags you to the lake shore. Best summer! Here you are, Sleep Team, once more, and need your help achieving the best summer ever. Critique my rock shipping. No, skipping technique, not shipping. Dang. Dahlia ships or skips a rock straight upwards. <laughs> it disappears into space. Moments later, you notice a faint glimmer in the sky. It's not Dahlia's rock. What a satellite island. Dahlia's rock destroyed. It's a meteor. It crashes into the woods on the far side of the lake, turning them into a giant bonfire. Yes! Ultimate campfire! Quick! Tell me some campfire stories, but very loudly. You're about to tell her the one about a horny summer camper who finally boinked, when you're distracted by a glowing figure approaching you across the lake. A greetings, says the figure in a warm, booming voice. It is I, a call Calor, Herald of Summer. Calor, it is an honor to meet you. Can you critique my rock skipping technique? I am here on a much more important errand, says the spirit. Your passion for achieving the ideal summer has moved me. I have a quest for you. I have grown weak as of late due to the lack of worship. The heralds of the other seasons mock me and drain my power. I need you to. Right then, I will do it, noble hot man. I was going to say, talk to them and ask them to stop being such jerks, but honestly, that sounds great if you're up to it. The first herald you must defeat is Vern, the herald of spring. He's in Florida. Oh no. <laughs> Make my own luck out of blood. Blood! Moments later, you're face to face with Vern. It turns out traveling to Florida is easy. You just mix a can of Bud Light with cough syrup and you're there. <laughs> What's up, bros? says Vern, while shotgunning a hard seltzer and thinking about boobs. <laughs> you're the video of the nerd, Galor? <laughs> yes. And also to get tan. A good tan is critical for the best summer ever. Ha, says Vern, doing three gang stands at once by the grace of his divine might. Suck my Easter eggs, losers. <laughs> no one can defeat me, he says. I'm gonna live forever. Spring break. Woo! <laughs> You'll just see about that. It so happens that you know the perfect technique for defeating the Herald of Spring. And remind them that Spring is just a lame opening act for summer or allergies. I feel like... Uh, fuck, 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 fuck. I think allergies is gonna be creative because it's in all bold. Or maybe it's the bold one. I'm going to the lame one. Yes! Oof. What? Says Vern, taking a selfie next to his passed out friend's penis. No <laughs> way! Spring is the tits! <laughs> it's almost as good as forgetting where the clit is. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> it's the pretty good. <laughs> really? And what were you doing last spring? Well, you know, spring break! Baby! Aww. Spring break is the third week of spring. What were you doing before that? Planning for spring break, obviously. And after spring break? Remembering all the good times I had at spring break, obviously. I mean, it's not like anything else ever. Oh my god. You're right. This word. Sending his 30th consecutive unanswered text to his dad. Spring is a bullshit season. You're the saddest That's right, you're overpollinated weakling. Spring is the coward's season. It's such a pathetic excuse for a season, it even makes the clouds cry. April showers bring my flower Mayflowers. <laughs> Kiss my blue ass. If I may. <laughs> <laughs> you would. <laughs> If I want Mayflowers, I'll buy them in the store in July. Uh, but, 
stem is burned, four Norny duct taping at 40 ounces to each hand. <laughs> Spring is a season where all the animals fuck. The fucking is pretty cool, right? You need a season to tell you when you have sex. What are you? Props? Do you have an egg timer weird wired to your dick or do you just slap your cock with a calendar every day? <laughs> <laughs> it's time yet. <laughs> don't picture it, Coolsty. Don't picture it. I'm picturing it. It's too late. It's too late. <laughs> I, I don't have a dick, says Vern. I'm divine embodiment of the season of spring. Please don't tell my bros. Summer forever. Oh, we'll tell them all right, unless you submit to the glory of summer. Fine. Whatever, sighs Vern. Summers when I was planning to go to pizza anyway. Fern suddenly dissolves into a vortex of divine pink energy. Adalia high fights you so hard your hand grows a beard. This is the only the start of a grand adventure. You gain two fun and one boldness. Very good. The game is tripping off. I'm afraid though I'm gonna miss the end of the event chain now because we're already on day two. We picked a long game though, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, we're good, we're good. So, what to do, what to do? Have a wank, have a poo. There you go. <laughs> <clears throat> that day, you get lost hiking in the woods. You use the stars, also known as nature's compass, to get back to camp. The stars actually teach you all sorts of things, like how one of the stars in Orion's belt is actually a nebula. The stars also teach you Italian, the quadric formula, and the true meaning of friendship. Wow, the stars sure are smart. And they give you two smarts. Afterwards you hang out with your number one summer crush, Joy. What a joy. <laughs> it's natural, fondly reminisce upon the past day. So she's flipping through the pics on her phone with you. Spell, yeah. Oh, this was back from season 3, right after we beat that mutant spider. <laughs> Fate looks so cute in this one. And look at that awesome fleet with Mac t-shirt I'm wearing. The t-shirt was so cool. It was vintage from the 78 tour. Stevie Nicks blessed herself. Whatever happened to that shirt? Did I sacrifice to the goddess or something? <laughs> oh wait, I remember exactly where I left it. Fuck. Joy makes a mysterious co phone call. She starts speaking about the Fleetwood Mac t-shirt, but the person on the other end of the line is obviously not being chill about it. Ugh. Listen, Araxas, Axarax, I know things ended badly between us, but can you please just give me back my Fleetwood Mac t-shirt? I specifically remember leaving it in your evil lair. Ah. I know I know which t-shirt I'm talking about. I didn't leave multiple t-shirts in your lair. No. There is definitely no need to discuss it in person. Do not portal here. Suddenly a magical portal opens. Um, I would like to speak the next person to. Uh, okay. Isn't, isn't Ghosty objectively sexy? Costa, do you want to speak the next person? No, no, it's fine. An objectively speaky, uh, sexy centipede person emerges, and they are giving off palpably villainous vibes. Jai, baby, I can't speak with you in person just like you wanted me to. You look as lovely as the day I wrapped you in my box <laughs> Enough of this. No, Axorex. I specifically said that I did not want to talk to you in person. You're doing that thing again, where you gaslight me into spending time with you, which is bullshit. <sighs> Tellers, meet my ex, Araxex. They're a magical evil centipede person I defeated back in season 3. I know they look hot, but don't let your guard down. They mind control everyone in Philadelphia and try to make all the citizens jump into a bit of centipede venom. 
Oh, you make me sound so evil, Joy. <laughs> But that's all in the past now, gorgeous. We should focus on the present. <laughs> and this very important t-shirt debacle. <laughs> Why don't we ditch this third wheel? You and I can go out for coffee and <laughs> talk it over. Or perhaps we can enjoy a romantic <laughs> dinner. Do, you, do any restaurants around here serve pre-chewed aphids? Ah, uh, x -Rex, if I go get one coffee with you. Do you promise to immediately hand over the shirt? Show me the shirt right now before I waste my time. Yes. Let me check inside of my canopus. Oops. Silly me. Looks like I forgot to bring the shirt. Guess we'll have to keep hanging out until my portal spell recharges. Typical. I've told you so many times that I'm not okay with us hanging out because we always end up getting back together. It's a toxic cycle. <sighs> but fuck it, I really want that t-shirt. Axorax is, is stressing out your potential thick goth girlfriend. Unacceptable. Get that Fleetwood Mac t-shirt for Joy by any means necessary. Shut up Black Market exclusively for buying and selling Joy's belongings. You trade, you trade for the t-shirt. Call the police and send out Amber, Amber Lord for the t-shirt. Axorus can't hide from the power of a vigilant community. Let's see. One appears to be Charm, and one appears to be Smart. I, I, I already did one of them, I know. I had this event already happen. Oh no! Oh. I'm not smart enough! An Amber Alert? Seems like it might be a waste of public emergency services. But it's better than watching Axorax drink coffee to their Pro Boss 6. Let's go. You and John go to the public police station and file a missing t-shirt report. You have scrapped the t-shirt. Beloved, vintage, smells like heavy metal concerts and burning sage. The police officers are super concerned. Did you say this was a Fleetwood Mac t-shirt? <laughs> and it was vintage? <laughs> this is serious! We're sending our best detective on the case. <laughs> yes. It's me. Detective McBooty. <laughs> We're going to find that missing shirt, officers. Remember, the first 24 hours are the most crucial to keep this case from going cold. I've sent out alerts to local cell phones. <laughs> we'll be conducting interviews with t-shirts lovers in the area. Oink, oink. And community <laughs> search parties will begin immediately. <gasps> you, you like my police officer um, accent? Definitely. <laughs> Wait, I appreciate the help, but you're misunderstanding. You already know who has the Fleetwood Mac shirt. It's with my ex, Axorax. A true detective never works off assumptions. We will get your t-shirt back. To the power of deduction and evidence, my dear Joy. Six oinking hours later. <laughs> detective McBooty concludes that, uh, yeah, Axorax definitely has the t-shirt. The oink. You there, fuck person. <laughs> Detective McBooty, FBI. Stop right there. Hand over the Fleetwood Mac shirt and we'll escort you to prison. <laughs> I don't think so, little detective. <laughs> For you see, according to centipede person law, I'm entitled to post breakup John Costi over this t shirt. <laughs> what? No, you're not. Axorax, that t-shirt isn't mine. I left it at your lair after we hooked up. We never discussed custody. I suppose we'll just have to settle this in a long, late, lengthy t-shirt custody battle. <laughs> the bastard's right, oink! Detective Mbuti says. Until we get the warrant, we can't touch the hair on the t-shirt's head. Sorry, Joy. My hands are tied. My hooves are tied. <laughs> So you're doing opening li litigations, baby. <laughs> you're not a big bad, a but you're still very nightmare. bad at this. That is why your ideas always make things worse. Get out of here before I curse you. Oink oink. Joy's mad at you, and you lost three bonus. And worst of all, you wasted the tech specter dolls on a pondus t-shirt wild goose chase. Shame. Shame upon you. 
point. And shame upon your cow or pig. And shame on your shame upon, shame upon all of these pigs. Move, losers. It's my turn. It's got Lexi's turn. And she wants to go. So let's creativity. Yeah, that's this one. Right, yeah. The scout HQ. That day, all the scouts make a braid chain as a team building exercise. You learn all sorts of new ways to braid hair. Finally, I can braid hair. Yes. You can't do it either. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, also, our mothers really, our mothers really failed us, huh? Yes. Also, try to braid the hair of something with hair is literally fire. Yeah, true. The person braiding your hair accidentally ties an infinity knot into your head. There's no way to untie it. You can see into infinity. But right before Coach gives you the worst haircut of your life, you see how all of your friends will die. It's useful in helping you eliminate David Davidson, the doomed dear person from your romantic prospects. You also watch every Marvel movie that will uh, ever be released. Bruh. You gain two creativity from witnessing so many plot twists. Poor girl. The counsel counselors had the poor judgment to leave you alone with Damien, Milo, Aravi, Hex and a whole bunch of macaroni. <laughs> Milo's using the macaroni for its intended purpose, painting a selfie, while Hex is eating it raw. <laughs> Damien is trying to kill it, and Aravi is looking up its stats online. <laughs> is it coach, right? No. Oh, okay. You, you're gonna get a quadruple Cisco feature. Look forward to that. <laughs> okay. Wait, this is this is not this is gold here, right? Yeah. Okay. Macaroni that won't help you at all in a bear attack. Can you sound creepier when you do that one? Okay, okay. What the fuck? Hey, King, it's me, folks. <laughs> That's right, campers. It is I, your delightful and overbearing tiger coach, here to teach you yet another lesson about bear avoidance. Remember, there's no bee in bear, except when there is. That's the kind of thing I, coach, say all the time. Mm-hmm. All right, coach. Let's get this over with. What's today's bear lesson? You just got flogged. <laughs> I fooled you. It was me, Counselor Flodge, this whole time. Uh, whoa, really? Even when you said it is I, your delightful and overbearing tiger coach. <laughs> Especially then, I'm never more myself than when I'm in disguise. Unbelievable. The camouflage skills out of this world, Counselor Fudge. I have so much to learn from you about the subtle arts. Uh. When it comes to subtlety, Ravi, you have a lot to learn from a basket of hand grenades. <laughs> Damn. Oh, that's Burn. a good one. I need to remember that one. <laughs> <sighs> basket of hand grenades? Well, I'm going to a gift exchange later and I want to bring something that represents my personality. Camouflage! You kids are getting a little far from the point. Probably because I camouflaged it so effectively. Hmm. And what exactly is the point then? Hmm. Point is that everything Coach has told you about bears is a load of horse hooey. I shouldn't be afraid of bears. You should be learning from them. As I am, you know. Oh, as I am sure you know, bears are the only animals more skilled than chameleons in the art of camouflage. Stealth mode! One of you could be a bear right now, and the rest of you wouldn't even know. In fact, one of you is. <laughs> That's right, I secretly replaced one of you with a bear when no one was looking to teach you a valuable lesson about the art of the sky. I have a thing, so... I don't have time for this ridiculous charade. I'm supposed to be serving looks at the soup kitchen right now. Poor people deserve spiritual nourishment too. Mm. 
It's Milo. Hmm. Yeah, I was just gonna say, Milo's definitely a bear. Obviously, who else has showed up here at camp during the summer despite never having been around at Spooky High? Uh, uh, well, you... Purses! No one! And I will haunt... And I will haunt anyone who disagrees with me. Oh jeez, this is getting kinda heated. You're pretty sure Milo's not a bear. They're way too hairless. But what can you say that'll prove it to the others? No, look, Milo's verified on Instagram that process was specifically designed to ensure that your favorite e-celebs aren't secret bears. So what So what if they are a bear? We're all monsters, right? Shouldn't we accept Milo for who they are regardless of species? So what have you said, Auntie? I, I said that Insta uh, verification is known for making sure that people aren't secret bears. <laughs> Um, but I will go with the second one again. So yes! <laughs> you step between Milo and the others to deliver a heartfelt speech about the importance of loving all of Earth's creatures, no matter how Willy. Wily? Oh, yeah. Wily? Yeah. Wily and murderous. Mm -hmm. Wow, that speech really touched my heart. And not in the fatal outside the chest way. I'm used to touching hearts. You did it, like. emotionally? Am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, guys, I've killed so many monsters just for being monsters. This is making me question my entire moral foundation. I need more therapy. Gonna eat that. Are you gonna eat those feelings, Aravi? I could eat them for you, just saying. <laughs> well, let's see. I'm both moved and impressed by your speech. I too believe that it is important to judge someone not on whether or not they're a bear, but on the content of their character. Hello, it's not me. In fact, you may be surprised to know. But I'm not really Council of Lodge, you lovable good disguise instructor. I'm actually a bear. Unbelievable. <laughs> wow. A bear. Council of Lodge was a secret bear this whole time. Whoa, you're a bear. Nice work, Alexi. Your inclusive rhetoric lured this bear out of hiding, and now we can stab him with these pointed sticks I made. Damien and Ravi chased the poor bewildered bear into the woods with their sticks. Afterwards, you all head back to camp for Sloppy Joes. Sloppy Joes. Mm. Sloppy Joes. Sloppy Joes. You know, I'm not normally one for Sloppy Joes, but was <laughs> it wrong to take advantage of Cardassi's heartfelt speech to flash out and hunt a bear? Uh. No way, Milo. Bears will do anything to get the upper hand, and no tool is off limits in the war against them. I had a friend. A notorious bear hunter named Darius Weapon. What? <clears throat> who got so tired of the constant psychological strain that he decided to quit the business. He actually got a job as a financial analyst. Can you imagine? Going from a lava adventure to a white desk collar job. And that's where his head was at. He even <gasps> started up a romance. A romance with a, with a claims adjuster at, some, at the same company. Had to file paperwork and everything to make sure the relationship was work, work price appropriate. Wow. They got married, had a couple of kids, and they're living together through this day in a beautiful little cabin in the he built himself. All monsters must Or they die. would be if his beautiful wife had to not be a secret <gasps> bear who ate him and their children after 13 years of marriage. Ba ba ba. Nom nom nom. That's nom, right. nom. <laughs> that and that bear embedded itself in Wall Street Insurance Company and, and the claims department just in case an ex bear hunter ever retired and decided to work there. <laughs> Wow, I guess I've got a lot to learn about being a vengeful piece of shit. Yeah, when I see where the bear went. When life closes one door. I think the bear should really be searching for Damien. I think the bear you should really should be searching for Damien is the one inside your heart. <laughs> Nobody knows what that means, but they're all really pleased with you for catching that crafty bear. You gain two smarts and one charm. That's straight, places. 
fictional character. A fictional character, okay. Carla. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, Supergirl. Uh, okay, we have games, we have series. So I need to go with like comics or something, I guess. Maybe a book? Maybe, Maybe a manga? Then I'll, I'll take uh, Must Harry Dresden. <laughs> okay. Player order is decide on which character that is the most similar to. It is Karlach, isn't it? I'd say Supergirl. But I'm not. You... I don't really know about Supergirl. Are you blonde? <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh... Man, I don't I know. Think this is a tough is one. Definitely lost. Maybe. What does Henry just dressed into? He's a wizard detective. Oh yeah, I could be a wizard detective if I wanted to. Uh -huh. But can you be gloomy and have a yeah. dog and a cat? No, I can't have a dog. That's true. Okay, I guess we go Tadas Karlasti Sleepty. Yeah. I'm just gonna pick a place at random again. Watch me. Watch me do that. You actually just mad last. You spend the day playing on the lake. Everything is fun until you're mesmerized by a strange song. It's the <gasps> sirens. They try to lure you in with a beautiful chance, but you know better than and challenge them to a riff off. They kick your ass, but, all you, but you all definitely have a lot of fun. More specifically, too fun. <laughs> you slip away from the. Zany camp shenanigans for a moment, and find Joy and Calculexa sitting on a blanket with a picnic basket. How wholesome. I need that bathing suit. Yeah, I need. That's such an amazing bathing suit. Greetings, fellow organic. Hello, friends. friend Tatis. Friend Joy and I are having an ordinary lex like picnic without any wacknick or ironic twists. Hey, you. That's right. I'm so worn out from fighting monsters and looking stunning all the time. It's nice to have a completely normal time with some non-threatening friends to change. Wait, holy shit. This is actually a regular pleasant picnic. You are ready for this to be some kind of oblique lead into some hilariously violent comedy scenario. Instead, Calculester is helping Joy get napkins and silverware out of an adorable wicker basket. What the fuck is going on? Pierce, please feel free to join us, Tadis. There is plenty of potato salad and fruit juice for everyone, especially considering mm -hmm. the fact that I cannot eat or drink. You accept their invitation and sit down because, well, you still want to boil at least one of them. <laughs> but something just feels wrong about this whole situation. Hmm. What's wrong, Tethers? You seem uncomfortable. Everything you get. I'm uncomfortable because I don't have a bathing suit like that, damn. <laughs> feel bad now. Admin permissions to hug? Indeed, I am detecting elevated levels of cortisol in your bloodstream, indicate an increased level of stress. You can share your problems with us, this is a judgment-free zone. No, no, you've got, you've got to get it together. If John Calculus has realized too, you're much, much of a reproved horn dog to have a picnic like a civilized monster, you're fucked, and on the fun way. Maybe she's just hungry, Cal. People can behave in all sorts of great ways when they're hungry. Engaging camp module. Excellent. Point for enjoy. I still have much to learn about organic organic irrationality. Would you like some fresh fruit, tatters, or some deviled eggs? That's it. Choices. Surely there's some sort of wicked choice you can make it to resolve the situation in your favor. That's how life works. Think, think, think. What's the way to prove your friends that you're actually a total regular individual who is great at chilling out and enjoying picnics? It's so fun that they make one of the side quests you having a panic attack. Just because you have to be normal for once. <laughs> Talk about the weather and how it doesn't remind you of sex at all, because why would it, haha? <laughs> why would you always want have to be making some kind of binary choice about what to do? Just relax and, enjoy and go with the flow. Yeah, I want to go with the flow. Hey, yeah, that's right. Just because you're hanging out with calculus, it doesn't mean you your choices have to be binary. Time to break free from the constraints of your goal-oriented lifestyle and just enjoy a sandwich by the lake with your friends, like a normal monster. I can't even do that in real life. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't. Who brings sandwiches to the beach? Though? 
I do. Why do I bring with... sandwiches to a hike. Ah, that yeah, makes sense. you always bring sandwiches, iced tea, and antipasti. And that's how you win a tatters. That, that's how I will be yours forever. <laughs> with antipasti. Antipasti is so good. You get like the olives and the um, the filled tiny peppers that like fill, that like filled with cream cheese, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's the good shit. And some grilled zucchini. Mm. Yeah, anti pasty maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and anti pasty? Not anti -pasty. now. You look pretty good. Which sandwich would you like, Tadas? The egg salad or the turkey club? I'm a vegetarian. Oh no. A wave of terror washes over you. Which sandwich what sandwich did you choose? The XL sandwich is technically vegetarian, though not vegan. What level of sens sensitivity endear endear you to joy or calculister? If you choose the turkey club, is that boldness? <laughs> Jesus Christ! why why did why did they have me down to a T? What the fuck? What's happening? <laughs> this is this is what betting at sex looks like. Yes. If you choose the turkey <laughs> You stare paralyzed at the two sandwiches and calculus robotic claws. We're going to save to make a decision. We're going to save to say, go with the flow. Hey, are you alright? You look pretty pale and you're sweating a lot. And you keep muttering under your breath about how you should check with the monster cap discord. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just a sandwich. It's not like it's seen your year 80 final exams or something. Or maybe. Maybe it is. And so he grabbed both sandwiches and do exactly what he did in the senior AP club, uh, senior AP final exams. Pile them on top of each other, smother them in hot sauce, enjoy the greatest culinary experience of your life to date. You did not do very well in your AP exams. <laughs> but you do great at eating these sandwiches. The flavors mingle perfectly, your belly rejoices, and, best of all, your friends don't give a fuck what sandwich you chose. In the shamelessly paraphrased words of Sigmund Freud, Sometimes a sandwich is just a sandwich, and learning this important language, you gain two boldness and one fun. If I had my um, webcam set up, I would just get my collected uh, works of Sigmund Freud and put them next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Make some space. Keep them in oh, that was a good. That was a good run. That was okay. good. So let's see. Uh, fun is already booked, right? Okay. Yeah. Fun is um, Creativity or boldness would be next. Then I will go for boldness. That day you venture into the haunted manor. Everything is going fine and you're reassured on how brave you are. When suddenly a ghost, or is it just someone wearing a blanket with two holes, so hard to tell the difference, appears and whispers in your ear. Remember one day, you will be long gone and no one will remember you, all the struggle you endure to become a better version of yourself both personally and professionally will eventually mean nothing. The ghost leaves while you take all that in, gaining two boldness in the process. After that, you head to the lake with Hex and Aravi, Aravi is testing out her new Zora armor and you're helping Hex chuck as much leg water as possible. Such nice. Big stats. This is so awesome, you guys! I can breathe in the water and do a whirlpool attack, because I'm so glad I spent 200 million rupees on these greaves. <laughs> Sorry, my, both, my mouth was full of leg water. I was trying to say, fuck yeah, this is fun as shit! Leg time with collapsing fucking classic vibes. Suddenly, you hear a weird voice calling out to you from across the lake. Hail adventurers, he need my message. You look over and see a messenger emerging from the trees. He's holding a letter scroll and he looks super stressed out. <gasps> huh? That messenger looks familiar. I swear I recognize him. Maybe someone I cursed in the past? Adventurer Aravi, Adventurer Hex, Adventurer Karlhusti. I have searched for many moons to deliver. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, 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 you come and pull a message for us, life or death, blah, 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 we know the deal. Give me the scrolls, noob. The messenger gives Aravi the scroll, but right afterwards he collapses onto the ground. He appears to be dead. Shut out of stamina potion, am I right? Anyway, looks like the scroll says, Venture to the Northern Wood. Bring the scroll. The Ring of Sustenance awaits you. Adventure awaits! You guys. Bye! The scroll's main quest energy is kind of weird, but I bet this invitation is a, this is an invitation to a dope ass dungeon. Oh, I can smell the loot already. Ugh. Holy shit! Hold everything. I just realized why I recognize this messenger. He's an actor. I saw him on TV in a commercial for the new sp for the new bagel place that's opening up around here. Bagels. Then, if he's an actor, that can only mean the Ring of Sustenance. It's the new bagel store, Aravi. That scroll is a dope ass guerrilla marketing advertisement. Yes! Ugh. Oh no. It's definitely an a dungeon invite. But everything is about bagel sex. And the Ring of Sustenance is a super dumb name for a bagel store. Mm -hmm. oh. And everything is about motherfucking dungeons, little miss. Dungeon liker. <sighs> you know what, Hex? I do like dungeons. I'm not ashamed of it, you green fur cloud. Huff my shorts, you loser ass, syndetta ass, RPG ass, nasty smelling ass, full inventory ass, Koopa Troopa looking ass, bitch! Oh, um. hell yeah. You've been waiting for Hex and Aravi to have an argument so you could support one of them in a heroic gesture of romantic friendship. Pick a side. Hex is right. I just found that Messenger's IMDB page. His name is Todd Zombiehead and he's definitely an actor. Aravi's right, that's no actor, and I can prove it by hurling his corpse into the sea. Dang. So the first one is, uh, would be a smarts answer, right? And the second one would be more a boldness answer? Good question. Uh... Man, food is good, but adventure is better. I go with Aravi. Bold, yeah. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Carlos, I don't think that measures there's an actor, so I don't think he's actually dead. Probably wouldn't be super chill to throw it. Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah, Carlos! Let's show this corpse into the sea! Aravi is very psyched about your corpse hurling idea. You three drag the corpse to a nearby cliff overlooking the majestic stormy ocean. <gasps> Damn, those are some big waves. Kinda makes you think about how small and ins insignificant we are, am I right? Psych! The ocean can eat my ass. <laughs> Shut up, Hex! Okay, Carlos, they time to her. I'm thinking we'll do a classic dead or alive test. We just it in, and if it floats, it was a corpse. <laughs> and if it doesn't float, then, uh. We get all the experience points for cutting the messenger. It's a win-win. God, I can't be- I can't believe I have to put on my pizza roll blasted goldfish and be the fucking voice of reason here. I hate being the- I hate being the voice of reason. It's not a vibe. But holy shit, this makes zero sense, Ravi. We got totally distracted. Even if you prove this guy's actually dead, that doesn't help us figure out the scroll. Uh. Oh my god, just let me throw this corpse into the ocean. I know it doesn't help us that much, but I really want to toss him. I haven't thrown a body off a cliff in like two whole months. Ooh. I haven't been playing Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Alright, do it. Eat that man back to the mother ocean. Yes! Yes, okay, Kalasti, here we go in three, two, one, her! Did they just say that the sea is a MILF? Yes. <laughs> a wet MILF? You throw the messenger into the ocean. His body hits the water and makes a huge splash. You all have a big laugh about it and high five and high five each other. Play of the game. See, this totally proves my point. Throwing cops into the sea kicks ass. <laughs> I was just thinking I'm right about the bagel shop, but I'll admit that splash was dope. Let's blindly follow the scroll to the northern woods. What's Together. Fuck yeah! And you're coming too, Carlaste. I'm officially making you our third, you are third party member of all this quest. I know you're only level three, but don't worry. 
I'll keep you safe while we're in the dungeon. Just stick close to me, okay? Stay close to me, Ghosty Witch. Yes, I will. Cleone vibes. Mommy. Cleone vibes. I'm going to drop the creativity. Yay. You spent the day learning new skills with the monster scouts in order to earn badges. You earn a badge for healing a wound using only the bark of a tree. You earn a badge for writing poems in EM Big Pentameter. You earn a badge for building a blackberry using only real blackberries. <laughs> nice! Completing all these unexpected and probably useless lessons earned you too creative. You Look how stacked I'm. Oh, this is a costly double bill. Oh yeah, whoo! You're talking to I'm a, a class coach is teaching about not tying because Dahlia's in there and you think it might be a bondage workshop. <laughs> it's not a bondage workshop. Greetings, campers! <clears throat> mm. Not tying is an ancient and powerful craft which has served sailors, adventurers, and sex havers since time immemorial. Oh. They are not so dynamic and versatile that they can serve your life or slaughter your enemies depending on which way you feed the bite. Okay. But we're not going to talk about any of these knots today. Today we'll be try tying simple square knots 6,000 times because fundamentals are important. <laughs> After all, You've got to learn to crawl before you can walk, and you have to learn how to walk before you can run. And that's still several steps before learning to tie a square knot. <laughs> Come to think of it, maybe this knot tying class should be focused on teaching you to run. Yeah, 6,000 laps for everyone. Wow. No, this is bogus. You came to this class to make to Macondalia, not to improve your cardio cardiovascular fitness. You grab her massive bicep and whisper that you should ditch me. Best summer Ditch? Ever! Ditch? No way! I came to camp to learn wilderness survival and not tying is the number one most important wilderness survival skill. <laughs> uh, as is fire starting, building shelter, navigation and finding water. They're all tied for first place. What, you think we can't just teach ourselves how to tie knots? Ridiculous! The only way to learn knot tying is by running in a circle 6,000 times, like Coach said. As much as you'd relish the opportunity to get real sweaty with Talia, you're pretty sure you'd literally die after lap 15 or so. You need a better plan. Luckily, you happen to think you know a thing or two about knot tying. And maybe if you can show Talia a real impressive knot, she'll get to teach her instead of Coach. So what's it gonna be, hot stuff? What knot are you going to show off? It's not about the knot you tie, it's about the material you use to tie, tie a regular square, but not using an electric eel. That sounds creativity. Tie the ultimate knot by getting married is boldness, I think, or charm. It's all yeah. seven. This one could be the smart, but need to be smart about that. Maybe, Maybe don't overthink it. Yeah, I'm getting married. Ah, uh, no, uh -oh. I'm not getting married. Getting married? But marriage is a sham institution. The idea of life partnership is likely as old as the human race, but our modern concept of marriage was invented by medieval barons to safeguard their inheritances. It is a really convenient <laughs> It is a convenient legal fiction which binds together estates and forges diplomatic ali ali uh, alliances alliance. <laughs> at the expense of personal autonomy and sexual liberty. What's more, any attempt to place a government-mandated cage around love is doomed to fail. There's a reason the ability to annual marriages has been hotly con contested issue. Uh. 
It's no coincidence that the rise of di divorce as a more socially acceptable option has run parallel to the women's liberation movement and the pro proliferation of various models of polyamory. I have a feeling I'm getting a lecture. <laughs> Go home! And that's not even getting into the various anarchist groups which oppose marriage on principle, labeling it a tacit acknowledgement of the state's power over our most private emotions. Wow, you had no idea Dahlia had such strong and well-researched opinions about marriage. <laughs> what? Oh, I don't. I was just reading directly from the Ashley Book of Knots, a definite knot tying manual dating back to the mid-20th century. Oh, man. According to author Clifford Warren Ashley, marriage isn't a very good knot at all. It's only a matter of years before it ceases to be secure altogether. <laughs> I feel sad. A much, a much better knot, according to the book, is freaky tantric sex. Wow. It's too bad you didn't suggest that. Wow. Then we could have done it. You asked if it's too late to suggest freaky tantric sex. You're more of a winter person. Much too late. You've already proven you know nothing about knots. You'd probably do it wrong. That is true. Hey, bye. So true. <laughs> now, if you will excuse me, I've got to run 6,000 laps so I can learn how a real expert ties knots. Dahlia ends up running 6,000. 69, 69, that's <laughs> extra crazy. Nice, nice. And you are devastated by how nasty she's being without you. You lose two boulders and one char. I'm so sad. Like a celebrity. Again. I know what Tantric is. I didn't. Ah, okay. But I, I, I did know. Now I'm wondering if it's because of all the weird sex you have or because of the weird yoga you do. I will leave that to imagination. <laughs> oh, so it's definitely yoga. Okay, another celebrity. <laughs> another mm. celebrity. Jason Derulo. <laughs> um, what's the guy who plays uh, Edward Cullen? Uh, yeah, Robert Pattinson. Pattinson. Robert Pattinson is mine. Yeah, and I'm choosing uh, Christopher Judge. Who's that? The guy who has uh, the voices. Oh, Kratos Chris and... Judge, yeah, yeah, Chris Judge. And Tilk. And Tilk. Player order is decided based on the likelihood that said celebrity is actually a time agent from the future here to prevent the world from ending. Jason Trudeau like... is not. I feel like uh, Robert Pattinson is just weird enough. So I'm guessing Tether, Sleep D, Carlex D? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Oh, it's drinking time. No, it's first night, then it's drinking time. Campfire time, yay! My girl says. <clears throat> you sit down between the classic Dahlia X Joe exchange. Dahlia is being very intense and excited, and Joy looks like she'd walk over a bed of hot coals if it would shut her up. Come on, Joy. I'd be a great addition to the Coven. I've already memorized all your moves, your favorite catchphrases. I even bought the limited edition Kawaii Third Hope phone case off eBay. What more do I need to do? Uh, how about be a witch? Or having even the slightest bit of foresight and subtlety to your plans? <laughs> Be subtle. Look at me. I'm being subtle right now. Watch as I inconspicuously nudge you towards inviting me into the coven. Oh, man. <laughs> now, please let me into the coven. I want this so badly. She's a poor old baby. I love her. She's an old baby. Enough of this. <laughs> we don't need a fourth number. Three is the number of the triple goddess, which is another force that can be broken. Hmm. Also, we only have three main character slots available. If we open a fort, the network will be forced to establish a union. So muscular! Well, I'm sure there's something I could do. Maybe I could be your body double for really intense fight scenes. I mean, we're basically twins already. You're both pretty big. And <laughs> our hips don't lie. 
Nuh-uh. Not happening. No. Ah, oh, come on. Look, I already have a joy wig that I can wear. Ugh. Is that real hair? Have no fear. Hell Die yeah. I've been collecting it slowly while you slept so that I could be prepared for this exact situation, which should show you just how committed I am to the coven. Joe looks halfway between exasperated and disturbed, but God, Dahlia is just so cute when she's irresponsible, passionate about something. You know, she's not going to drop this until she gets a satisfactory answer. But which of them do you want to, your answer to, to appeal to the most? You can be a Coven sleeper agent, so go to sleep and we will let you know when you're needed. Coven's last year was too grim. The season we need more sex appeal. You can be the irresistible do seductors who distracts the villains. Dahlia. I'm afraid you're gonna have to go to bed. Aww. Wait, how does me sleeping help the coven with an intense battle sequence or a tender emotional conversation that builds character relationships and raises the stakes for overall season arc? Not that bad. No, no, trust me. Talit is like so right about this. The role of coven sleeper agent is very serious and definitely totally essential to our cause. <laughs> oh, well, in that case, come me in. I sleep like no man, woman, or non-binary badass has slept before. I don't know, I mean, I've seen Ronnie sleep and they sleep pretty hard. <laughs> but oh, that's cute. Tal and can based. give them a run for their money. They always fall asleep before me and wake up after me. It's ridiculous. <laughs> How? Ugh. Yeah, cool. You do that. Uh. Hey, now, let's talk strategy. Should I go silent mode or pull on snoring? Do you have any advice on the best pose to maximize result? <gasps> blankets or no blankets? Or should I sleep with one foot outside of the blankets in case I get too hot? <laughs> That's a valid concern. Do you sleep ass out of the blanket in case you need to fart during nights? No, no, no. The it thing must is, be I'm... inside the blanket. <laughs> the thing is, my spine, torso, and um, like lower area always gets extremely cold. So while my legs and arms are fine, like my spine is always just just freezing up, oh. and I'm like, oh, it just sucks. And then sometimes I get cold from it. I, I don't know. So you need something like babies have. Like a, a sleeping bag, but like just with cutouts for your for your uh, legs. Or for your butt. I thought about this. Um, I also got like a um like a wa a hot water bottle. Oh, it's still it's still in my dad's apartment. I need to get it. And sometimes I'll just put that in my back and it helps. Yes, Wärmflasche is superior. <laughs> or maybe I could just get someone to spoon me, someday. I will be back. First. Anything for my fearless leader, I'll go back to my tent and start now. Impressive. Phew. Thanks, Tethers. You're a lifesaver. You know what you're you doing, know. don't you? The coven itself may not necessarily need a new member, but I could always use someone to help me beat off rabbit fangirls. But you know, only if that interests you. He Hell yeah, it does! You enjoy some amazing alone time with Joe discussing your favorite Coven episodes and the best strategies on how to keep an annoying fans at bay. So romantic. Tonight will be the night of the living dead. Since you stole my waifu from me, I shall go, go to Mossman. Go to Mossman. Yeah. Go to Mossman. Hello there, Sleepsteam. Do you fancy a gossip? Yeah, why not? You could go for a little gossip as a treat. Wonderful! The only problem is, I do not have a gossip. I am fresh out and looking to refill. Got some gossip Would to you spare have a gossip to spare, perhaps, perchance? <laughs> you always have a spare gossip to donate to anyone who needs it. Let's go. I'm myself as well. <laughs> Eggplants. Yeah, eggplant. <laughs> I'm sucking this plane because it was just sort of excited of climate change to like singing opera at pitch perfect. Yes, yeah. Basically. Type in something you can buy in bulk. Mint tea, innit? 
<laughs> I was thinking of toilet paper as well. <laughs> I'm thinking of tea. You see. Ah, thank you, Sleepsty. You are truly charitable. Farewell, I will my pay your kind forwards by spreading this gossip amongst my other gossipless peers. Soon, most men have spread your gossip to the entire campground. Hello! Hey, listen, I just had the weirdest gossip about Sleep Tea. Ooh. As you may know by now, Sleep Tea is super into artisanal eggplants, right? Which is weird enough by itself, but he is going to get weirder. Oh, oh no! Uh -oh. When Sleep Tea was four, his parents noticed that he turned they tend to enjoy singing opera at Pitch Perfect way more than most children. <laughs> but who am I to judge? The most unexpected parenting twist. They decided to encourage this baby by rewarding Sleep Tea by forcing him to lick several eggplants for an hour a day. Now, Sleep Tea is so upset with eggplants that he once sold his uncle's entire collection of vintage toilet paper in exchange for a very rare one. I guess. Life really is makes you think, huh? Beautiful. It does make you think. It makes you think that Sleep Tea is gonna gain for charm, and he does. Let's sure those nice. The eggplant is charming, what can I say? Let's go to my date. You've been waiting... You've been waiting 20 goddamn minutes for someone to pass you the marshmallow bag. You finally get up and realize who's hogging it. <laughs> you are that, you know I'm the best at making s'mores. I'm better than any than you at everything I do, and also I'm better than everyone because, and also I'm better at, than everyone at everything. Period. Yeah, Ravi, cool. We get it. You like winning at stuff, and that's your whole character or whatever. Listen up, but I like you. I have some depth now, which means I'm not just better than you at catching these marshmallow catching these marshmallow on fire because I'm an edgy pyromaniac. Yeah. It's also because I have fucking anger issues. And losing at this would really piss me off. Uh, aren't they the cuters, Kardashian? Yeah, I'm talking to you, Broski. You know why you're. I know why you're here. You want to get a taste of someone's delicious forbidden marshmallow. The forbidden marshmallow, yeah. Yeah, go, go on. <laughs> Would you like to fuck in my book? <laughs> you wanna get us some yeah. You should try judging the some more making contest for a bit. I've been doing it for the past half hour, but I keep forgetting who to give criticism. And to give them the criteria. I think I just like eating free s'mores. Yeah, that's one thing Damien and I can probably agree on. Texas judging so far has been total crap. That's crazy. But now that Carlaxi is here, she can judge a small contest. Mm. Everybody knows that Carlaxi is completely unbiased and has no ulterior motives for trying to impress you or me with her judgment. Nah, let's both be real. You definitely already know who you're gonna give the win to. Even if these are objectively the two worst s'mores you've ever eaten. But hey, you came to camp to smooch, not to eat. Why not both? So what bullshit criteria are you gonna use to get closer I to that home? I'm here to eat the forbidden s'more. <laughs> I'm here to eat smooch and eat bubblegum and I'm all on s'mores. Look at you. Hi, Lily. Hi, Lily. <laughs> Oh, um, it sure is going. I don't know where, but it is going there. You're, you're um, actually in the game, Lily. There is a big titty god girlfriend in it. Uh, Damien small was perfect. At least for anyone looking to eat a s'more reduced to a charred piece of coal. Who cares about eatability anyway? Arabi s'mores was the best because she poisoned it apparently. And chefs say <laughs> seasoning is key to good cooking. A little bit of poison this didn't kill anybody, right? Right. Ah, no, nobody. <laughs> no, never. So you're go choosing Aravi, probably? Yeah, yeah. Huh? What? I can't believe that you poisoned your s'more too. Yeah. Wait, seriously? You both poisoned your s'mores? I just thought it was weird flavor. That, that weird flavor was kombucha. Huh? I think we'd put kombucha on a s'more. 
Oh no, you guys are Gen Zoomers. I figured out you put. I figured you put kombucha on everything. Come out of here. Wait, how did you get your boys to taste like kombucha? Let me tell you some more. Mm -hmm. Wow, I hate to admit it, Ravi, but this poisoning technique is actually incredible. You somehow managed to bring out the natural spiciness of the arsenic marshmallow without charring it to the core. How'd you pull it off? Get good. Hey, what for? Oh, well, for starters, I didn't show my marshmallow to the core, stupid. <laughs> but, thanks. Usually when I poison Damien's food, I just slather it with vampire bad venom and call it a day. <laughs> but since Carlastic is gonna eat it, I want to taste better than that. Oh. Because I hate a list and I hate you. Sorry, I won't usually admit to something so vulnerable like that. It's probably just because I'm passing out from the poison. Whoa, you carried yeah, this Yeah, I'll say to try this more to make sure it will taste good, obviously. But don't worry, Kalesti, I'm, like, mostly immune to this stuff. It turns <laughs> out none of you are immune enough to not faint from the poison s'mores. <laughs> Coach pumps everyone's stomach tomorrow morning. He's pretty used to doing that after seeing you guys poison yourselves a ridiculous amount of time. <laughs> but can you believe Aravi gave you an art? Artisanal. Poisoning. <laughs> this is the forbidden marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> she must really like me. <laughs> I think we're all doing fine, uh, Lily. We're just having a laugh with the overly sexual nature of this game. How are you? What? Should I not read the cat? Yeah, no, maybe. It's fine. It's this okay. Ooh, sex on the beach. I don't remember what text on the beach does, but I think it's bad. Ooh, yeah, it sounds too good to be good. <laughs> Not the bees! <laughs> I think I remember what Not the Bees does. Uh, you told me what protein, protein Shake does. So, I'm gonna go for the mystery box as well. Ooh, a spell shake. Sounds good. I think our likes to get the, the double, double gift. gift. That sounds this good. sounds good, I think. I will keep it. Okay. <laughs> you passed. Okay, what do we get? Spell shake, gifts. I just turned the spell of mine into a beverage. Ah, yeah, you can read this one. I just turned a spell of mine into a beverage because, well, I guess, because I was bored. The spell what? will change all your stats with the stats of a friend of yours. Wow, Ooh. but I have good stats! I can only imagine its drink version does exactly the same thing, but it also tastes like passion fruit. That's fun, right? Oh god... <laughs> I have good stats! Yeah, but Kulsti has better, better stats than I do. Yeah. I'm thirsty. Let's see. The double gift. That's so generous of you. A beverage designed to be gifted. Choose a friend you'd want to grace with my humble concoction. This person will be gifted nicely. Well, since you just took away a bunch of stats from Sleep Tea, I think it's only fair. Yeah, yeah, I, I would have gone for, for Sleep Tea to, to get oh, some sky. stats back. Ooh, this okay, is more than generous. Are... <laughs> and I get nothing except my name changed. Ah, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> During spooky high, bees poured out of your mouth, remember? Yeah, I do. Well, in spooky camp, the bees pour in. You actually <laughs> just drank a bunch of bees. <laughs> you sure did. It is so epic from that day on. Everyone knows you as Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Oh, right, yeah. Still hard to believe you drank that. Good luck, I guess. Wow, that's... Oh, that sucks so much for you. Okay, a movie again. Not a movie. I'm gonna go <laughs> a with... A bee movie. I'm gonna go with La La Land. I'm gonna go with Knives Out. Good choice. 
Uh, phase or decided based on which movie would be the hardest to reenact at a fireside play at summer camp. I Good think question. they're all pretty pretty hard. Yeah, I know. but I, I no no let me see. Um, you'd have to get the B costumes for a B movie. All for right, La La Land, yeah. you mostly just have to sing. And for Knives Out, you mostly just stand around. You would just have to get some fake blood. And a bathtub. And a bathtub. So I think it's Carl Axty, Sleep T, and Nicholas Cage. All right. Let's go. The final day. Spicy. Make some space. What will you do, Carl Uh, well, I need boldness. While you're exploring the haunted manor, you hear a voice calling your name. It comes from under the bed. Two blood red eyes. They're not blood red. What are you talking? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> no, no, they're At not you blue. From, ah, yeah, the green one. <laughs> from, <red>. the, <laughs> from the inky darkness under the bed, a voice that sounds older than time whispers. Who you want to gain some boldness, Karlaxi? You say yes, because you actually do want that. Okay, here you go. Whatever that thing is, it gives you two boldness. What a nice under the bed thing. A few hours later, you're out adventuring with Aravi and Hex. Y'all followed the scroll from that messenger, and now you're deep in the northern woods. You've already found several environmental puzzles and a few cryptic clues. With each solved puzzle, you draw closer to the secret location of the Ring of Sustenance. Strangely, all of the puzzles and clues so far have been vaguely bagelish themed. <laughs> wow. I was re I was rearranged these glowing stones to spell locks. A scroll a, a, a scroll appeared. Damn, this is some dope as Korea bail shop marketing. This promise laughs. Shut up, Hex! For the last time, Hex! These cubes are leading us to a dungeon, not a fucking bagel store. It's so obvious. Ugh. You'll see when we get there. What does the scroll say? Psh. I have bagel here. Scroll says, you're near the end of your quest, triumphant adventurers. Walk two miles to the north, the ring of eight awaits you there. <laughs> I keep on getting more voice to do for Hex, anyway. <laughs> Finally, we've solved these annoying intro puzzles, and now we get to dive headfirst in some sweet, sweet dungeon. <laughs> the dark dungeon. <laughs> the dark dungeon. Gods, I hope it's multi-leveled with a super complicated layout. Bagels. Toads. But just in case it ends up being a bagel shop, I should prep first. Gotta make sure my my patent and cream cheese utility belts for maximum flavors. Uh... Gross, but also yeah, we should get ready. I should I should back to my stash and optimize my inventory. I'm all short range high damage right now, if you know what I mean. Ravi puts a bag over your head and leads you to her nearest fully stocked weapon stash. She starts reviewing her inventory. Okay, you just gotta pack enough for a full dungeon one. Let's get 20 green potions for healing, 20 red potions for mana, and 400 apples in case I need a quick plus 5 health. <laughs> I need all 128 different types of crafting materials. Dungeons are unpredictable. You never know when a mini boss might be. But it's going to be weak against Iridium Core. And then I have my weapons, Obvi. As of now, I've got 8 swords and 14 crossbows equipped, each with slightly different attacks and range stats. Those are all 100% necessary. Boring! Hey, I'm Ravi. Porter's my hoarding addiction, called. They want their absurd collection of users' shit back. Okay, I have one last inventory start up, but ooh, I know. I'll take the axe of golden demise. I looted it from a from a lightning warlock mini boss last week. Fuck that, Ravi. You know we we share inventory space, and I need that slot. I'm planning to get it covered in schmear, so I gotta take my package of toilet paper napkins. Uh... Napkins? They're a complete waste of inventory space. We're going to be fighting to survive in the dungeon, okay? I don't have time for your snack food nonsense. 
Uh, dude. You take up like 99% of the inventory space. You can, have, can you have me like one slot? Where did you learn how to share? The toilet school? Aravi and Tex are fighting again. But luckily for them, you're an expert at conflict resolution. What's the best use for Ravi's last precious inventory slot? Hex, the axe of gold and demise isn't for slaughtering enemies. It's for slaughtering bagels by chopping them perfectly in half. Aravi, napkins are just tiny shields. They might not, might not give a huge defensive boost, but you got 200 of them here. Mamma mia, that's a lot of shield. Oh. Reckon one is bonus, one is smart. So I'm pretty smart already. Mm -hmm. So you're more likely to pass the check. Yeah, I you think also the, right, the, the I also feel like the the shield one is way funnier. The shield one. Yes. <laughs> So bold. No. What? Okay, I did <laughs> not think that this is the bold oak, but okay. Seriously? Using a napkin for a shield? Uh, excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse oh, me? Sorry. Excuse me? <laughs> excuse me, monsieur. <laughs> I was so confused. Excuse me? Using a napkin for a shield? That's total bullshit. I mean, I guess you could technically equip a napkin, but I wouldn't. Come on. Ravi, aren't you always telling me not to judge a weapon by its flavor text? Come on, let's test it out. Oh, fine. Just to prove this is a completely useless inventory item, I'll equip a napkin as a shield. They're done. Now go ahead and attack me, I'll prove it doesn't. <laughs> Hex, use death tackle. It's super effective. A Ravi takes minus four. Nine 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 eight points of damage. Huh? Whoa, are you okay? I went to a little bit of a battle fog there, kind of blacked out. Huh? Hex, it worked. Did you just see that? I took 0. 0.00002 less damage points than usual. If these napkins each have a 0. 0.0002 defense modifier, and we have 200 of them, oh my god. I can get a multiplayer stat boost if they're all equipped simultaneously. Power up! A single napkin is pretty weak, but if I, but if I did my match right, a stack of 50 napkins could actually give it a decent defense boost in, in battle. <laughs> yeah, see? 200 napkins worth of defense take up only one inventory space. It's a goddamn bargain. <laughs> Whoa, this is so sick. I'm in. Let's take the napkins. I need to go. I need to round my defense stats anyway. Nice. Psst. Go last thing. Thanks for tricking Ravi to make me happy. You're chill AF. When we get to the bagel store, I'll give you a lick of my schmear. <laughs> <laughs> you should never compare sex to food, but Hex does it all the time, somehow. Just, just, <laughs> just give his, uh, bagel sh give, give his schmear sh 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 a lick. <laughs> Give his move a sloop. <laughs> Once again, your conflict resolution skills have saved the day. Now prepare yourself. The ring of sustenance awaits. Uh, let's do this. Yeah, I'm looking fun. I'm always looking fun, aren't I? You have to the lake to get your tan on, but as soon as you get there, it starts to rain. Most of the beach goers leave, but no, you will enjoy the fun lake day, damn it! You had a really rough morning and you won't let anything else stop you from gaining fun! You aggressively splash in the lake and laugh as loudly as you can, hoping the clouds will give up on trying to ruin your day. Instead, the lake gets struck by lightning. When you wake up from the electrocution coma, you're offshore on shore, the sun is shining and you have a cool new facial twitch. You win! You gain too fun! This is a takeover! Flippy! Hi! What are you doing? Not important. It's time to kill Winter! I tracked her down. Her name is Bruma and she lives in Alaska in a place made of ice and crude oil. Let's go! You hesitate for a moment because Alaska sucks. But Dahlia triggers a travel montage before you can object. 
one plane, one bus and one tantum right later, you stand before the palace of the Herald of Winter. The portcullis opens with a tremendous grating noise. Who dares approach my sanctum? Bellows the Herald, who looks like Elsa from Frozen, but wearing a Christmas feather, and blazing with the words, this is not a copyright infringement. Dahlia is here! <laughs> it is I, Dahlia Aquino, and I have come on behalf of the Herald of Summer to melt you into fluid. Foolish mortal, says Elsa, El I mean Bruma. You cannot defeat the mighty winter. It is by far the superior season. What? Impossible. Tama has all the best things. Revealing swimsuits, sweating profusely, the Summer Olympics. Indeed, says Bruma. But winter has bitter cold, not being able to go outside in the Winter Olympics. Versus, oh. she's right. Damn those figure skaters and their sexy ice bikinis. Sexy ice skaters. <laughs> yes, you cannot stand against me, smiles Bruno. Now run along, I have lunch with Sarah Palin in an hour. <laughs> no, you can't give up so easily. Surely there must be a way to ruin winter and defeat terrors. Wait, you've got it! Invite all our Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm gonna invite all the relatives to holiday dinner and damage them with POLITICS! Ooh, yeah. You share your fiendish plan with Dahlia. She's a pawn. No, we can never do something so heinous. Hein heinous? Heinous. We must have standards. We must be noble. You remind her that you're on a quest to murder every season but summer because a meteor told you to. <clears throat> I guess... There really isn't anything noble about that. What a relief. Now we can do anything. A few folk calls and hands with invitations later. Bruma's family is at the gates of her palace, demanding to be let inside. What is the meaning of this? shouts the ice beater. It is not a holiday. Why are we gathering? Today you die. We're gathered here to celebrate your doom. Your doom, honey, says Bruma's mom, a hag made of ice cream. Does that mean you're finally getting married? Ah, uh, mom, I told you I'm focused on my career right now, says Bruma. Fine, come in, I'll make everyone slushies. Mm, nice. The crowd files inside, Bruma makes slushies, Uncle Yeti makes some uncomfortable comments about race. It's a typical family gathering. Then, just as everyone sitting down to a meal of crushed flavored ice. <laughs> so, <laughs> how does everyone feel about current political figure? I hate him! cries Bruma's left leaning Yuki Wana half sister. I fundamentally reject his conservative position on a controversial topic! You have it all backwards! Bruma's aunt, who is a Wendigo and also an anti -faxer. According to this Facebook post widely shared in my own conservative echo chamber... Incomprehensible racist tired tribe! Shouts Uncle <laughs> Yeti. He would. Ah, oh, that's it! Shouts Bruma. I'm moving to Costa Rica and turning into liquid. Let's seize the summer! Yes, another life climbed and claimed in the service of the Herald of Summer. Soon, only one season will remain. I assume this will have no negative impact on the climate and I refuse to examine that assumption. You do too, because you're horny. The single-minded quest of booty overall else earns you two fun and one boldness. So many Good for you. To go. I'm going. It's a typical bloody camp dome at Battle Royale. While you're, while you're hiding to catch your breath, a severed fist flies through the air and lands in your lap. You unfold it. The fist was holding a tarnished silver locket containing the photo of a loved one, likely waiting for the hand's former owner to return home safely. <laughs> you toss that behind and also find a crumpled up coupon redeemable for two charm at Pedro's Pastrami Paradise. Oh, Pastrami. Rad. Thanks, Mysterious Hand. 
Later, you're looking around for drawing. You just finished reading her copy of How to Be Slightly Better Friend Despite Your Suffocating Horniness by Dr. Hugh G. Boner, MD. You see Joy nearby. She's quietly reading, and you learn that it's rude to interrupt, so you give the book back and turn and turn to go. <laughs> Yay! You show basic respect to your friend. Wait! Wait. I'm like sorry. That's it? You're just going to leave without introducing any absurd high stage shenanigans? Duty calls. Come on, don't be shy. You're always inciting the anger of dark evil forces. And I always save you thanks to my magical powers and impeccable leadership skills. You tell Troy that you don't really have any urgent misadventures going on. Ever since you stabbed that ghost in the face last week, things at camp have been pretty chill. Oh, well, I guess that's good. I mean, it's not like I was hoping you were possessed by an eldritch horror so I could cleanse you and save the world from a primal evil. In fact, I'm happy that you're not interrupting me with life or death narrative takes. I was technically supposed to take this summer off, so I guess I'll relax. Don't do it. This is Joe is so by the cute. Way, <laughs> and also, look. And also Loki workaholic. You reminded that she defeated Mitri and, Mor and Morty's plan to poison the water supply last week. That was enough her heroics, right? Nicholas Cage, you're totally right. Dimitri and Morty are my closest official nemesis. We should head over to Camp Rival Camp right away. Let's save the we world. We can spy on Dimitri and Morty and make sure they're not plotting the end of the world, or the rise of the dark side, or anything like that. Great idea, Nicholas Cage. Not what you meant, but whatever. You follow Joy to Camp Rival Camp, where you two hide in the bushes. Right away, you spot Dimitri and Morley. <laughs> Check out those fiendish, muscular villains. They're clearly planning some kind of evil scheme. Just look at them. They're using that sword to make adorable origami animals. Oh my goodness. Yep, Morley and Dimitri are doing some adorable and maybe deadly arts and crafts. Before long, they move on to the next BFF activity. Grooming an alpaca. Oh my god. Dimitri... Dimitri put a party hat and a poncho on an alpaca, and Morty is busy weaving braid beads into its mane. They are having so much fun. Hmm. Okay, I know it doesn't look like they're being evil, but... What if that's a sacrificial alpaca? Maybe they're preparing to sacrifice some cool kind of... Oh, it's necrophise. Then you watch as these two shirtless goofballs cook up some homemade raspberry jelly. Somehow they fashion some fancy jelly beards, and then they wear the beards? Ticky, but sexy. Ah, this is so frustrating. I can't tell if these two are doing evil deeds or if they're being stupid. And I look like a total if I intervene when there's no evil to defeat. I can't believe I'm saying this, but... Nicholas Cage, what do you think? How do we tell if Morty and Dimitri are actually being evil? I can choose whatever I want, all my stats are the same. Wow, that's true. Just choose what's fun. <laughs> Dimitri and Morty are idiots, and stupidity is basically a different language. Find an interpreter to, who's fluent in stupidity. Yeah, that's me. Disney movers taught, taught you well. <laughs> yeah, that's you. <laughs> if these two are evil, they'll burst to a classic villain song sooner or later. Let's get the interpreter. <laughs> oh. Huh. Someone was fluent in stupidity. It's interesting, but I'm not sure. Oh my goodness, I know exactly who we can ask. Howdy! <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, thanks for asking me to hang out in camp, rival camps, bushes. Love hanging out in bushes. And sometimes being on. <laughs> thanks for coming, Scott. Nicholas Cage and I have a favor to ask. You know how you're a really good boy, right? I'M A GOOD BOY! Yes, 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 I'm a really, really, really good boy! Since you're such a good boy, we want you to go talk to Dimitri and Morty right over there. They come back here and tell us if they're planning anything nefarious. Got it? Scott walks over to Dimitri oh, and Morty. Oh my god! <laughs> Dimitri and Morty are so cute! Dimitri and Morty you're worried that it's going to end with werewolf, minotaur, vampire, bloodbath. But Mitri and Morty quickly invite Scott to play with them right away. Suspiciously quickly. Almost as if they were hoping this would happen. 
After 45 minutes of solid playtime, Scott returns to the bushes with Dimitri and Morty. <laughs> Scott, you look different. What happened? What did they do to you? I'm not ready for evil sexy Scott. I'm not ready. Oh, yeah, I'm Wait. ready. I'm ready for this. Wait. No. Oh, this is perfect. Joy. Nicholas Cage, I joined the dark side, so that means that I have to betray you. <laughs> Look out, I'm betraying you right in your face! <laughs> yes, young Mr. Howell is on our side now. It was our plan from the beginning to launch them on the universe of fun activities and then turn them evil. <laughs> oh, I knew that you guys were up to something. I guess Scott was the perfect target. You probably needed some un impressionable. The new guys you got that right, eyes. baby! Our evil indoctrination only works on people who are kinda of don't have washboard apps. Right, Scott? <laughs> yeah, Morty and Dimitri taught me that the only way to be a real good boy is to be a bad boy. That's why I'm being a bad boy right now. Because I wanna be a good boy. <laughs> so get ready for me to be bad. I'm gonna say cusses and bark at night and I'm gonna be whatever I want. I kinda already do that, but still. <laughs> uh, it's going to take me an all afternoon to fix this. Because I asked for it. God, why am I such a workaholic? You're not sidekick Nicholas material. Nicholas Cage, can you get out of here? I have to defeat these two idiots and make Scott good again. And you tend to make everything more difficult. Bye. You leave. The white hot searing pain of mild social ejection makes you lose two charm and one boldness. At this point, maybe you should just join the dark side for, atten for the attention. Oh, I'm Achievement unlocked! Not a good boy anymore. Oh. That's amazing. Everybody choose a food. <laughs> Flan. <laughs> of course you do. Gonna say custard. God damn it. Okay, I'm um. gonna say chocolate chip ice cream. I'm gonna go with burritos. Echo salad would be my, my other choice. No, no, we got we got chocolate chip ice chocolate chip ice cream, flan, flan and burritos. Player order to decide based on which food is most likely to be active, actually sentient and plotting humanity's demise. Flan, it's flan. It's definitely it's, flan. It's flan and then burritos because they're complex. Yeah, um, chocolate chip. Chocolate chip ice cream is just not into an old full domination. Kinda of stupid. <laughs> yeah. Bit it's stupid. just here to comfort us. I'm gonna quickly to take me. a toilet break if you don't mind. Yep, yeah, me that's too. fine. Right. Fine, see you in the video. Right back.
Okay. Are we all back? We're back. Yes. And it's up to Pusty to decide where okay. to go. Okay. Uh, how are your stats looking, guys? Okay. There's Absolutely charm. atrocious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And creativity would be probably aunties. So I can either go for boldness or for fun, but I had boldness like two times in a row already, so I want to go for fun. Fun. Okay. Go swimming. That day, you go diving to see what's at the bottom of the lake. You find a comic book. You pick it up, but it's so interesting you stay there reading it. This is bad, since you cannot hold your breath indefinitely. <laughs> You rush to the surface, but before getting there, you drown a little, and some leg water gets into your mouth. Gross. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> you swallow some weird stuff that was in the leg water, like a whole jellyfish, and you fun? What was that doing there? <laughs> Afterwards, you meet up with Aravi and Hex. Ever since you received that mysterious scroll, you three have been on a long arc. Artist quest. Arches. Arches, okay. You've solved countless puzzles, followed clue after clue, prepped your inventory, and now you're finally here. The secret location of the Ring of Sustenance. Boring. What the fuck? Is this a big damn wall? This is a bagel shop or a dungeon. I want a refund. Oh. Wait. Hex. Check out those mysterious runes carved into the wall and Kune form. It translates to Sacrifice the blood of a fool to summon a manager of legend. <laughs> Aravi splits your finger open and smears your blood on the wall. Suddenly the ground below you starts shaking. The wall crumbles away and opens up a huge dark cavern. <gasps> With a bagel shop inside. There's a grand opening sign, a line of adventurers out the door, and a paper mache bagel on the roof. Bagels in chat. Bagels, bagels in, in chat. chat. Wait, wait, I need to put the bagels in chat. <laughs> <laughs> What? What is this place? Did I eat too much paint again? Am I hallucinating? You're approached by a goblin. Hail and we'll met, adventurous. This I, the manager. You have done well to reach this place. Welcome to the Ring of Sustenance. Mm. Hold a minute. This place makes no goddamn sense. Is this a dungeon? Can I shoot you with my crossbow for experience points? Start off, you see, this place used to be a legendary dungeon built to challenge the strength of humanity and protect the secret power of, of the gods. But we ran into a cash flow problem. Dungeons are wildly unprofitable. This Turns is out, true. inviting adventurers to loot your treasures is a bad business model. Who knew? So we free branded. Welcome to the Ring of Sustenance, the world's first ex dungeon bagel shop. Enjoy the handmade bagels and the many lethal traps. We are totally <laughs> winning our lane. <sighs> That's such a bad idea, actually. All the fun of bagels with all the mortal danger of a dungeon. Fuck it, let's get some bagels. You are. Go buy some bagels. You have to jump over several spike pits to get to the cashier. You trip and get stabbed, but your pumpernickel bagel smells delicious. After that, you three head up the smear station for cream cheese. There's a grumpy looking goblin guarding it, and he immediately starts screaming at you. Greetings, Mr. Salada Schmear Guardian. If you wish to enjoy the cream cheese paw on your bail, you must best me in Battle of Wits. You may choose any of my many smears, but be warned, one of these cream cheeses chock full of deadly poison. But which one? This is my dark game. Choose. Fuck yeah! Since so a randomized life or death skill check. Fuck yes! We'll play a game, Normzarks! 
Ravi girl. Oh, because they're all here. If you lose this game, we won't get any cream cheese. A bagel without any cream cheese isn't a bagel. We have to get this right. Five massive lukewarm vats of cream cheese are in front of you. Which one is poisoned? Guess right, and you will hopefully impress your two hottest friends. Trick question. All of the cream cheese is poisoned with chemical additives and refined sugars. It's obviously the one labeled poison flavored cream cheese. So I'm pretty good with smarts, right? And I'm not so good with creativity. Hmm. That's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Feels right. <laughs> um, man, th this is kind of tough, not gonna lie. What would you guys think? Oh, but maybe chat knows something? Pretty obvious. Wow, you're not helping your friend out, I see. You'll get there. And I take the the hint with obvious and take it's obviously the one labeled poison flavored cream cheese. So smart. Once Carlasti is in line, that cream cheese is actually labeled poison flavored. Gotcha, noom Zalks. Take that, sucker. Ah, Bella Wizzy look pretty stupid right now. I thought you were so smart, but you never predicted that Kolasti would have such baller reading comprehension skills. Erg, are, are you certain that cream cheese contains the poison? Perhaps it's a ruse, a deception, or a witty trap. Alright, Jeff, have a good lurk. Uh, have a good lurk. Probably you won't be turned for for the stream, so. Maybe you will. Maybe. Who knows? Ooh, yeah. Nah, for sure shit, dog. That's the poison one. Final answer. When it's human adventurous, it's all because of that stupid health inspector forced me to label my poison. <clears throat> I liked it better when this whole place was a dungeon. I killed way more adventurous. Since you won the Battle of Wood, you all get cream cheese on your bagels. Yay! That was totally worth risking your life. Are you gonna finish You know them? what? I'm gonna go with the poison flavored cream cheese. I literally can't die, so I think I should be chill. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. Damn, this smear is pretty dope. The poison tastes like white cheddar cheese. It's best of bagels ever. Yeah, I gotta admit, you were right, Hex. Place is pretty awesome. It's nice that they clearly label the poisons. Most bagel places don't bother to do that. Do you want to be my support? And, and I really like how the three of us have so much fun together. We're a really well-balanced adventuring party. <laughs> <coughs> you blushing, Ravi? You want to have a big old threesome? Lol. <laughs> oh my god, shut up right now! Oh. The mere mention of the word threesome gets you free boldness. You eat bagels all afternoon with Hex and Aravi, your official BFFs. Imagine you're so horny that you try to strike yourself and you keep stuffing your food with bagels. Okay, whatever I do, it won't save me from my inevitable misery. Aww. Aww. In the haunted manor, a voice whispers from the walls in a frightening voice. Uh, okay, twice voice. Devs, devs. <laughs> Nicholas Cage, you can't escape your fate. You'll soon gain boldness, but after that, something weird will happen to you. It could be great or terrible. You don't want something potentially terrible happening to you. You stay, but just to be sure you get extra bold as per the voice's prediction. 
Look at you, trying to defy destiny itself. That takes some bravery. Hey, have two boldness. <laughs> Later, you help enjoy test out some of the latest potions. You down a m mysterious vial of green bubbling elixir, and what do you feel its effect? Did it work, Nicholas Cage? Do you feel any less horny? Dorian's in super close, checking your pupils for dilation. You shake your head. The potion didn't work. You're still super horny. Either that, you're just in love with, or you're just in love with joy. You would make an interesting uh, love interest. That potion is only effective about 40% of the time. Plus, I think I might actually miss your ambitoriness if you were cured. I guess you're growing on me. Oh, by the way, you should come to my show tonight. Remember my Screamo band, Pentagram? I'm the lead singer. Damien and Dahlia are back up. Well, we've got a gig. Huh. We're playing at Shit Church. You know, that super shitty bar that they build in an abandoned church. <laughs> a lot of people confuse Shit Church with the other nearby church slash bar as chapel. But Shit Church has way more ghosts, and the drink are half price after two. Uh, Eleven. Eleven. Wow. <laughs> Cow! <laughs> I immediately went for the Roman numerals. <laughs> Fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> you should come tonight. Although, one of those potions I gave you has a rare side effect that makes you turn into a literal fool, so. If you're busy, I get it. Holy shit! Joy just invited you to a show. It's basically a date. This is your chance to show how serious we are about having sex with her. By being Vendergrant's number one fan. Venogram is pretty popular though. Chances are there'll be lots of horny fans at the show. <clears throat> You'll have to distinguish yourself from the crowd to get John to notice you. That night, you show up at Chit Church. It's fucking terrifying. The whole bar is filled with ghosts, screamer fans, and Catholic priests. <laughs> it's like a ghost concert, huh? Womp <laughs> womp. <laughs> you can't tell if everyone is speaking in tongues. Or if they're just really drunk. Also, there's no bathrooms. Just wormholes to hell that people are pissing directly into. Yep, this bar is definitely the most terrifying single location you've ever been in. It's the perfect place for a screamo show. And look, there's Ventagram. Joy to see you. Looks like you showed up, Nicholas Cage. I'm happy that you're here and that I didn't accidentally turn you into a fool. You would have been a cute fool. Move. Fucking metal! Cage. Cowboy! Guard your eyes because Ventagram is about to rip them out with sound! Ventagram shrooms! Ventagram forever! Indeed, we're gonna wage war on your body with sound. Come on, Damien, let's beat the shit out of each other to warm up. Oh, yeah. calls. Thanks for coming, Nicholas Cage. You're about to go on, so I should change it to my outfit. If you're an extra enthusiastic fan, you can help me take it off after the show. God, you're in love with this hot feminist witch. And Vendergram... I mean, this is true! That's just describing <laughs> my partner! And <laughs> <laughs> Vendergram's be. about to start. What's his strategy for being the most awesome fan of all time? Any fan can clap and cheer. You'll celebrate Vendergram's greatness by performing a blood pagan ritual in their honor. An average fan would wear a t-shirt with the band's name on it, but you're not an average fan, you wear a t-shirt with the band member's social security numbers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do the blood ritual. Oh that's bold. Perfect. You know exactly what to do. A pagan sacrifice ritual. It'll ensure that this gig goes well and prove you're the greatest fan ever. Just one problem. Who should you sacrifice? You see a random person standing in the corner of the bar. He looks kinda smart. You approach and ask him if he would sacrifice if who, who he would sacrifice a bloody pagan ritual. Be... Oh no, never mind. It's just a rabbit. Don't bother with such nonsense, filthy peasants. I'm the most influential music critic in the world, and I've already decided to give Pentagram a scathing review just to be mean. <laughs> oh, this guy is basically begging to be sacrificed. You got to work right away. A little later, the lights go down. A spot living with joy in the middle of the stage. She was confident, powerful, and hot. Apparently, being in a band is sexy. Who knew? This is hey, shitheads! We are Fantagram! We are here to fuck you up and eat man's organs! Wait, what the fuck? Is that a pagan sacrifice circle in the middle of a dance floor? 
Joe looks down and sees the giant pentagram you've done on the, sur on the floor with blood. You've tied the music critic to the pentagram and stabbed him multiple times in the face. <laughs> So fucking hardcore! Let's shred Fentagram, we're gonna get you soaked in sound, bitches! The crowd goes wild! Fentagram starts playing, and the music activates the sacrifice circle. A portal opens to another dimension. Monsters' tentacles t t issue forth. Sasha, I see it. Is this just, is this just one of my d, &D campaigns? <laughs> Probably. He's taking notes. <laughs> I'm taking notes. The demon tentacles start, touch, start torturing the critic. Amazingly, the demonic shrieks and, crit, and critic screams are of pain to mingle perfectly with Ventagram's music. It's a feast of horror and pain and hardcore metal. This is true, Screamo. The crowd loves it. Even the critic starts cheering and applauding. Uh, this is the best show <laughs> I've been in my life, which is not the end. Ventagram. Forever! <laughs> Joe finishes the show with an 8 minute power ballad that literally kills the music critic. <laughs> nice! Nice! <laughs> Afterwards, she invites you to drink with the band. Fuck yeah, you're a groupie. Whoa, that's crazy. Oh, you guys, somebody recorded our whole show and posted it. Even the part where that critic guy said we ruled and then that tentacle ripped his arms off. Sick! This is a takeover! Look! People are even tweeting at us, asking to be sacrificed at our next show. We should definitely make sacrificing audience members, like, our thing. <laughs> we should. And it's all because Nicolas Cage is such a good fan. Seriously, though, what other fan would make a fucking vegan sacrifice for us? What a plot See, twist. This is why I have a secret crush on Nicolas Cage. Well, I'm a little tipsy. Thank the God I didn't say it out loud. <laughs> Joe is the most adorable person you've ever seen. You two hang out and chit church together the whole night. It's tons of fun, and Joe coaxes one of the tentacle monsters into giving you an erotic massage. Hot! Oh, and the tentacle slime gives you ch three charm. That's some good slime. Okay. Let's go. Some good slime. Uh, yeah, I need to fix my creativity. That day, second scouts, you learn to identify different berries. You all search for berries and try to identify them. A blackberry, a blueberry, but Rachel the deer person finds a very really shaped berry no one can identify. You all stare for hours. It's closer to abstract art than a berry somehow. It's a true thing piece. It forges to reflect on berry inequality, and although there are no easy answers to the questions it poses, you all gain too creatively from the experience. <laughs> Hey, quick question. Does it count as kidnapping if I'm abducting you so you can help me do a thing you already agreed to help with? <laughs> Never mind, you can answer later. Right now I need to knock out you out and drag you to Portland, Oregon. We go to Danvers! Yay! We're gonna fight Danvers. Wait, that's where Danvers lives? I thought, yes. Danvers wasn't, I thought Danvers wasn't Cali. No, no, she's now in Oregon. Probably yeah. not in Portland, but Oregon is now her state. Cool. Before you can say I would have come with you willingly, you're waking up with a bump on your head stuffed inside a suitcase on the PDX bed Pegasus carousel. Uh... Right, there you are. Let's go. It's time to defeat the Herald of Autumn. Their name is Autumn, and they <laughs> live in a giant pumpkin. The Dahlia's intelligence turns out to be wrong. The Herald's name is Autumn, alright, but they live in a Tasteful craftsman bungalow. They are a giant pumpkin. Hey, friend, says Autumn, sitting calmly on their porch with a steaming bowl of tea. Here to defeat me on behalf of the Herald of Summer, etc., etc. Aww. That's right. Although, I have to say, I'm a little surprised that Paul is the final boss of this thing. I'm not surprised, you're surprised? Awesome. Chill low fire place seemingly from nowhere. Every quirky person thinks they're the only one who likes fall. The thing is, Autumn says as they adjust their cozy scarf, everyone in everybody in the entire world thinks of themselves as quirky. 
far the most popular season by far and will be forever. Pack up, go Damn, home. they may be right. No wonder, it's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Not if I have anything to say about it. And I do. What I have to say about it is no. Talk is cheap, honey, says Oven. Their voice makes you want to fall into a pile of crisp coffee leaves. How do you actually plan to defeat me? Well, um, I'm going to punch you real hard. Hmm, no, says, says Autumn after thinking about it for a second. Punching really isn't a vibe right now. What do you mean? Punching is always the vibe. Watch, I'll show you. Okay. I, I can't do it. The vibes are too chill. It's like trying to punch my way out of the worm guild. Oh no, with Dahlia's greatest weapon out of commission, how will you two, how will you ever defeat Autumn? Well, you've got one or two ideas. Sun burns ruins summer, allergies ruin spring, family drowns in winter, but fall is ruined by drone attacks. Exploit Fall's greatest weakness, offer them pumpkin spice flavored poison. Yes, I'm doing that. No! Ah, oh, fuck! <laughs> Failed it right at the end of this quest today. No! Autumn takes one look at your vial of pumpkin spice poison and rolls their jack-o'-lantern eyes. Please, they sigh. You're not going to get me to drink something you just openly described as poison. <laughs> But it's not poison, it's pumpkin spice poison. That's even worse, says Autumn. I mean, I'm a pumpkin myself. That will be cannibalism. And that's bad? Sorry, I'm from hell. I sometimes forget which things are atrocities. Yeah, says Autumn. Definitely bad. I mean, would either of you drink people's spice poison? Autumn proceeds a steaming draught of people spice poison from their loose fitting sweater. It's in a fashionable and eco friendly poison terms. Of course not, it's poison. It's not poison, says Autumn. It's people spice poison. And listen to what teens are saying about it online. Taste was my least favorite thing about poison. Now this drink truly speaks of to me. My mom told me I shouldn't jump off a cliff if my friends did, but she said nothing about drinking poison. Hashtag a latte to literally die for. <laughs> You're insane if you think the opinions of a bunch of teens are going to make us. <gasps> Slitty, why did you just chuck the thermos full of poison? You couldn't help it. The FOMO was just too strong. <laughs> Hello, darlings. Did someone just stupidly drink poison in here? I got a notification to pick up a soda at this address. Ah, it's just you. For the last time, Sleepy, I'm not going to reap your soul for free just because we go to the same camp. Figure this out on your own. I have to go capitalize on this hot new people spice poison trend. I can't believe you let Autumn defeat you with your own rules, Sleep T. We'll never defeat them now and it's all your fault. I'm going to take out my frustration on a small country via warfare. Thanks for nothing, poison lover. On the bright side, my refusing to reap you means you don't die. On the downside, everything else. You lose two bolts and one charm. Fuck and the girl right of your right dreams. Galaxy, we will be your summer love. I go for the threesome. Alright. Mm. Ask yes. Ravi. Yes. Let's go. Nicholas Cage. She's such a joy to deal with. <laughs> um, okay. Last, not least, sleep team. I am Maybe after <laughs> <laughs> Alright. You finally get to the courage and ask your beloved to watch the media shower with you. Us? As a summer fling? <gasps> but you know I want to have the best summer ever! 
I have this feeling that dating you would make it <laughs> the most <laughs> meh summer, summer ever. Oh my god. Hmm. <laughs> Pass. Not Nothing good warrior. comes out from this. And that coach appears to give you the monster scout's badge for surviving a great deal of embarrassment. He's super proud of you. He recorded you being rejected and has uploaded it on the internet to share the exact moment in which you earned the badge. You become an internet sensation. Still, you're devastated. Aside of for being famous for being pathetic. You try to cover the hole in your heart with your newly acquired badge, but the hole is figurative. Dum dum. Sweet. That's painful. You finally gather up the courage and ask a beloved to the watch the meteor show with you. What's that? You want to be my summer fling? This has been You know joyful. what? I'd love to. A chill summer romance would be a great respite from my high stake, terrifying save the world schedule. <laughs> but a perfect end to a perfect vacation, Nicholas Cage. I can see a love arc happening. Last day of camp was dreamy. Joy finally fulfilled a dream of spending all day relaxing and finishing her goddamn book for once. The two of you chill by the lake and Joy talked about her book, and you two chatted about it with literature and life the night. It was simple, it was simple yet magical. Here we go. You look for a Ravi and Hex. Hey! Hey, Colasty! <laughs> what an adventure, huh? <gasps> Fuck yeah, bagels forever! Oh, but really, it was awesome. <sighs> Come to think, Robbie's summer camp is coming to an end. If you remember right, experimenting the joys of summer camp is what it demanded for the curse to be lifted. <laughs> and you delivered, girl! So go ahead, take off the necklace, you're free. Huh? Ah, right. <laughs> I don't know if I want to. <gasps> what? Seriously? Yeah, why not? It's not that bad to be cursed, you know? Hmm. You're obnoxious, but like, the good kind of obnoxious, if that makes sense. Totally. The good kind of obnoxious is my middle name. Hmm. And hey, I mean, I like being here. Your soul is comfy. I wouldn't mind extending my stay a bit. Me neither. So it's said, Hex the Ravi is here to stay. This will be fun. We should celebrate. Kalasti, want to join us? You've been a big part of this, after all. <laughs> You do! <laughs> you three celebrate all the way until sunrise. It seems Hex's influence over Ravi has been good at getting her to chill some more. And so you dance, you love, you make a toast to life. I guess this is a three And for then all. you do some more. Nice! Okay, I, I'm. Wow, I'm. I'm flabbergasted. That night is one of those summer memories you'll think fondly of many years after today. And it will feel surreal, making you think your youth was some sort of strange territory where anything could happen. Like embracing the night and life itself alongside a monster slayer who would have tried to murder you just a few months ago in her ancient curse. A toast to life and its strange, beautiful twists and turns. The secret ending. Good job, go see. Five cool. Yep. Well, friends. We did it. What did we learn? What did, what did we learn today? We learned that before we knew it, those weeks were gone. It felt like a hot minute, and it felt like an entire lifetime. That night, as we saw summer coming to an end, we all wondered what would come next for us. It felt like the end of something big. Little did we know, life still had many advent wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older, and I can see it. How those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives. A broken heart turned tragedy sung for centuries. Wild nights became epic treasures forever. Every kiss and every love is now a constellation we'll always find while gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by. I think the most important thing we learned today is that uh, Kulsti's got game. Yeah. I'm a wrestler. 
a result. And I once got release of all of my charges for my thick ass. <laughs> yes. Nice. And of course, it's a dumb idea to try to poison someone with something called poison. I mean, even the cream cheese wasn't a possible to poison us because it I... was labeled. Yeah. I fumbled it right at the end. I could have had a, a, a special ending and I fumbled it, I think. So yeah. The Crotus animations are so cute. Yeah. That's cute. That's, this song is so stupid and fun because it's the special one if you stream. <laughs> Alright. I had fun. I hope you guys did it. For sure. Well, I think this is the point where we go off into the dark night. Play some Border Skate 3. <laughs> Probably because I have a little bit of time left because tomorrow is the holiday. Yeah. But don't stay up too long. I'll see you all next week, alright? I'm gonna go, we're gonna go towards the... Uh, uh, I'll look, um, I should have a raid message. Yes, yeah, I have a raid message. So we're gonna get the high to a new finishing. Uh, dark. Alright, thanks everyone for being here. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. For bearing with our shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs>